Well, Hold on, before what? we get started with the recap, I just oh want to say, hey, I I live in I live across the bridge from Portland. Oh shit! Yeah, that was I'm somebody gonna... went to the uh, you went over by the crib, the old crib. Yeah, yeah, the non-smiling guy. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> He's not a serial killer. He just doesn't smile in photos. I promise. Yeah, it was, it was it was a long day. It was my day off. I was too tired. I feel that. I feel that. Josh, you were saying it wasn't even if the house is even there anymore. Like they put something else there, right? So, um. Like, yeah, they tore down like two or three years after we moved out. They tore down, didn't they? Yeah, it's that it's that um, hotel. The uh, oh, okay. The, that one picture is now a hotel. But if you turn around and look at the cattle corner, the the art studio kind of looked like the old loft. Like the old house. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. it was mad funny because like when we moved out or whatever, they're like it was like an old toy. I think it was like an old toy warehouse. It was what where it was the part that we were actually staying in. So. That was mad funny. That could have been like a cool setup for like some creepy dolls. Or what's that? What's that one? Annabelle or something uh, like that? Or Chucky? <laughs> yeah. like send me home. Send me home right now. <laughs> That's why, uh, like, I was in Vegas a year ago for a business trip, and I was staying at the Palms. And you can still rent the room that they filmed the uh, the original Real World in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, big thing out there. Yeah, it's it's like three grand a night. I was like, no, nah, I ain't trying to do all that. Like, just give me yeah. a normal. Nah, give I'll me watch a normal it. room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a normal room. I'll watch the show and live yeah. through. I guess it, you know. Yeah, right here. It's all in the imagination at that right, point. Exactly. So. I I almost have a chance of meeting you. I just missed you at Pizza Smitza. Oh, so I got to meet Jordan, Johnny, and Avery. It was like for like five seconds each, and yeah. then I was like, got my pizza and had to go. Right. <laughs> But I just missed you, so. Did you go to one that's over there by uh, uh by the by the campus, like the actual main one, or the because you know they got the other one. Well, at least when I was they, there, they got by PSU. Yeah. And then they had the other one that was like on the other side of Pro District, because we would go. So, to, I, would, I would go to either one. I was at the one by PSU. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, yeah. That's the main one. That one's I, that's the one I, I normally go to. Hell yeah. Is that one still there? That one is still there. Okay, facts, facts, facts. Wow. I try to hit on low key though. The owner of Pizza Smita, right? So cool story. After we got hired at Pizza Smita, the owner was always at the one at PSU. And he like invited his daughter uh up there to come meet like all the cast members, right? And I remember I tried to hit on his daughter, like I think like day two of work, his daughter came <laughs> hit on her, and I didn't know it was his daughter at first. And he was just came up and he started charging me up. He was like, "Yeah, you know, asking me questions about her and like being all sly." And I'm over <laughs> like going in, like, ah, like you know, he's like, no. "I was like, oh, oh shit, don't fire me, don't fire me, don't fire me, <laughs> don't fire me." Like, I didn't know. All right, guys, everybody, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, this is Rick, Karina, Josh, and we've got a very, very special guest, the one and only Marlon Williams, joining us to recap episode 18, uh, Night of Mistakes. And oh. there were a lot of mistakes being made, and without further ado, let's just get into this. Yeah, so we we leave off the last episode, obviously, um, Emmanuel and Logan had completed their elimination and TJ pretty much let everybody know that there were going to be two more eliminations that night. They left us on a cliffhanger. So we come into this episode and TJ immediately lets us know, like all the cells are disbanded. And the way that we're going to figure out who's going into these last two eliminations is that everybody's going to have an individual vote. And they start off by voting for the females. Whoever's voted in gets to call out their opponent. Now, like, I don't I don't really know how I felt about this because it, it feels like this last elimination to get into the final like this is for the final and it comes down to a popularity vote. Like, I don't know. Crash. I felt like that was so like, like, I get it. Like, it was like, so like, I was shook when, when he said it, I was just like two more. I was like, what? But I, I feel like one, I feel like with the way the, the female dynamic was in that house, I don't feel like anybody was going to make the right decision that last minute. 
because no. majority of the females there were already in like, okay, I'm I'm done this week. Like I'm I don't have to worry about nothing. I'm chilling, right? So there's been no politics. There's been zero politics played. You know what I'm saying? Going into this elimination round, right? There's been zero game strategy. We don't know if it's at this point. We don't know if it's going to be a um, a team final or a singles final, right? You don't. I mean, so it's just like there's so many angles. So it's just like. It just sucked in the moment because I was like, I know all of them are about to like literally just screw themselves because they don't know what's next. You know what I mean? Like you can't even, yeah. you just, you're just right here in this moment. But yeah, I don't know. I, I really think that somebody like Amanda, I think Amanda potentially um, and Tori should have did like a quick campaign. Like right there, you know what I mean? Like I don't know how, cause you know they edit it in a certain way, so it's like I don't know how much time they had to like really think about their vote. But I feel like Amanda and Tori especially should have did a heavy campaign right at that, right when he said that we're going to do two more eliminations, because Tori potentially could have saved Emmanuel and Devin if she would have campaigned votes in a certain way for the females and then and then backdoor those those deals for the males because to be honest i i was i think the big thing i was most upset was emmanuel had already won his uh emmanuel had already won his elimination round he should have yeah. been he, he should have exactly been, absolutely 100 i was so pissed and then i think and the yeah. thing that pisses me off is, is you got people like Emmanuel, yes, he skated through the whole season and then he won his elimination round. He should have been able to go to the final because whether it was politics or whether it was good game planning, he did what he had to do and earn his route to, to get to the final. But then you got someone like CT, right, who hasn't done a single elimination all season and he just gets to sit on the sideline. Not to mention, we've already talked about it before, it's like he doesn't have a great elimination record. Right. Yeah. Right? Right. right. Yep. So it's, and then two... No, there's some other thing is you got somebody, you got Nelson, you've got Kyle, who's beat CT, you've got all these other players in here. Why would you let I don't understand why they keep letting CT get to the final free? Like he gets the free back. <laughs> right. like if there was ever a time for you to pull your head out of ass and say, we gotta take a shot at CT, that would have been that night. You got some people yep, in yep, there. Yeah, I agree with that. Of taking CT out. Because if CT gets to the final, you it's like ninety percent. It's ninety percent that he's probably going to win. So why not take? Yeah. A shot? Oh yeah, absolutely. Right? Like why not take the shot? Exactly. If Emmanuel was going to go in there again anyway, you know what I mean? Like 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 campaign to tell him to take a shot at CT. Tory could have could have. You know what I mean? Like or like just I don't know. There were just so many other angles that they could have done. Right. That if you're always going to talk about people earning their way to a final, but then vets make it all the way to the final and don't go into an elimination round. You know what's so funny to me too was mm-hmm. watching Nani and Casey have that little conversation where they were talking about, oh, we worked so hard to get to the final. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> like, <laughs> did what? But, I mean, Casey, maybe, but Nani, really? Yeah. Yeah, girl, at least I, Casey. I love Nani to death. I don't got no, like, personal issue, but girl. Yeah. You worked mm-hmm. hard to get to the Come final? On. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and that's what i'm saying is like you know at least casey's won a couple dailies right right you know but but like going back to what you were saying earlier like just the whole way they played that out like first tj announces like all right the cells are disbanded you're on your own it's a singles <laughs> game so they're already shook and then he says all right now it's two of them more eliminations vote a female in and i think like they were just so shook they couldn't even handle like the idea of politicking right i mean so what threw me off the most is like when you watch the votes go down and it gets to tori she says amanda off top and it's already gone a couple votes in and then it gets to nelson he's kind of struggling and i swear i thought tori said you know what they're gonna vote me she's gonna pull me in anyways it's and okay she does they capture so it to me that. that's like saying it's okay vote for me don't she doesn't vote say me. it's okay she but did the, the captions on the tv says it's okay it's okay she's gonna vote she's gonna call me in anyway yeah but she wasn't looking at nelson when she said that and then when she turned to nelson okay. she said she's gonna she's gonna vote me in so uh, see, I so I took it the wrong way okay see I yeah. I, I, I took it, it as was, her telling him it's yeah. definitely implied 
Okay. Yeah. So here's my thing is like, I think the whole title is based off Tori in this first 30 minutes of this episode. <laughs> like, it's just like, don't get me wrong. I love Tori and I'm rooting for her. She's like my favorite of who's left, but it was just a night of mistakes for her. Yeah. And when Amanda got called down there, like that was the next mistake. It's like, why are you going with your heart and going with like this enemy and it's not trying to make this money? You're saying it's for your family. And I believe you, you're trying to make this money for your kid, but you're not going to take the person you have the best chance of beating in anything. And that's Nani. Yes. And you're going to say, I don't want to betray my friends. Your friend just voted for you. What the every, hell are you doing? Every single right. person voted for you. You Please. got free reign to be selfish. You yeah. got free. Okay. And my thing is like, everybody plays this whole, I got friends, I got friends, I got friends like thing. And it's just like every season, somebody that's a friend screws somebody over and they're still friends after the show. Right. Yeah. So why not take the chance of still being friends after the show and having the money versus y'all BFFs and you both broke. Like, I don't get it. I don't, like, it's just yeah. like, well, and my thing is, is it's like, you know, you have your friends and you have your alliances. And obviously this is me looking in from the outside, but you have your friends, you have your alliances, right? Up to a certain point in the game, but you can't take, not everybody wins the million fucking dollars. So if it's coming down to me or my best fucking friend, like I will take you as far as I can. But when it comes down to me or you, I'm sorry, bitch, but it's going to be me. Is like, me? <laughs> any examples of people who play that game and they never win? Leroy, Nelson, uh, the list goes on, right? So it's yep. just like, I, I understand early game, like you said, early game, you have to be loyal because it's like, if you're the first person to break trust, you become enemy number one, right? Yeah, Corey you're, did you're this done. season. Yeah, you're done. Right, right? Yeah. And which really makes, which, which is really funny to me because it's like, Emmy, Emmy, like, Emmy is one of those people that like, I just, after she threw the, the rookies under the bus by calling out uh, like week one, like, I kind of really like lost a little bit of respect for her because I feel like this was the one season where the rookies were competent enough to realize they had some numbers and some power to play the game. But when Emmy threw um, McHale under the bus, it with the list off and it gave all that power back to the vets. Right. Yeah. And then yeah. she comes back and she screws her boy in this, in this last vote and doesn't vote. And then it's just like, I cannot, and she's just the biggest hypocrite right now that it's just so hard for me to root for her because she's she's played a very good game. But it's like, well, she's a snake. She's a cold blooded snake. And like oh, everybody yeah. hyping her up. And it's like she is one of the few people you can't trust. Mm -hmm. Like you can't trust her because she will throw you under the bus. She'll take your partner. She'll lie on you. She'll put your business out there 100 percent just to save her butt every time, every yep. time. She oh, is yeah. the most unloyal player, and not a single person has called her out all season. How do you do that? That so, is great acting skills. She's tied to CT. Exactly. But here's my thing is, <laughs> all right, so, so I got to say this. Marlon's like, rolling his eyes right now. <laughs> and I'm going to jump ahead a little bit to the other part of the vote, which was the mail vote. Because the mail vote, they, they jumped right away on that, let's vote the rookie in. We're going to yeah. keep the vets in, but yeah. the, but the women didn't, they jumped right on an Amanda on Amanda. And maybe you are going to run part of the final as a pair and you don't want to run it with Amanda, but still nonetheless, yeah. like I, it, like they could have just done so many things different. And I think they dropped the ball on the women's side. Big I, time. I, I do think I that the think whole, that. I think the whole going for, you know, all the girls going for Amanda versus Emmy is because like every one of those girls, knew that they would beat Amanda down there, you know, but Emmy's a wild card. She's won every, all of her eliminations Boy, and they've no. all been different. You know, she's done puzzles. She's done endurance. She's done strength. You know what I mean? Like all of her eliminations have been so different and she's won every single one of them. So it's like, I probably fucking wouldn't vote her down either. Okay. Well, hold on. And I, I want to just talk about that though. Right. Like, yeah. Emmy is like rookie of the year. Right. Cause she won yeah. four and she made it to the final, but Okay, and I just like to play devil's advocate, right? Because if you're gonna get yeah, somebody, no, 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 go for it. Idol, like I feel like we gotta, like we gotta really just justify it, right? Yeah. Who did you beat though? Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. You, no. And, and this is the only reason I said that is because like, don't be surprised if she comes back another season and does absolutely terrible because she goes into some elimination rounds against some seasoned people and get absolutely destroyed. I mean, one was a physical competition, and the chick that she went against was. 
you know, a third of the size of a little the object that they were storing. I can't remember the girl's name, but like, but right? no, I like, think that was the Bettina, Bettina one where they had to throw yeah, the rocket. Yeah, that's a gimme. That's a gimme win. Like I could, I just feel like when we're looking at comparing her to previous like high performing rookies or even current, you know, vets, like her wins didn't have as much of a oomph like for her as a rookie because I felt like she was expected to win in all of but one where it was like, okay, maybe she may not win, but like the other ones, she was, she was, she was the top card. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I just like the fact that they're giving her this rookie of the year thing. I'm just like, ah, she performed very well, but I mean, I think it's very reminiscent of Amber B last year, because if you think about it, like Amber B got hyped up and don't get me wrong, she won that final, right? But she was partnered with uh, the guy that's arguably on the GOAT list, right? But who did she beat in the elimination? She didn't beat nobody. nobody. And, and then she comes in this year and then gets smoked. Terrible. She struggled. Yeah. She struggled the whole time. And the I wouldn't be time. surprised if Emmy, and the thing, I didn't want to wish bad on anybody. I mean, the way she came in, I hope she can, like, facilitate that. You know what I'm saying? But I, I just don't be surprised if Emmy comes back and does terrible because now she's on the radar and people know how she plays and everybody knows her game. So now people will call her on her stuff, whereas this season, it's beginner's luck, I feel like. I feel like she might be a case of beginner's luck and, and she's not going to be able to facilitate that type of performance if she has to go against a Casey head-to-head, a Tory head-to-head, right? She got right. lucky she didn't have to go against a lot of these heavy hitters because she had CT back in her. She yeah. had... Uh, uh, um, Devin. Devin. Not because he was really working with her, but because he was she was just a pawn that he could manipulate early in the season, right? I don't think she's going to do that well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's my thing is I'm curious to see like how she would do on a season that CT is not on the cast, you know, when she doesn't that have that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would assume considering he's getting into all his movie filming and stuff now, but who knows? Okay. Well, all right. So before we, because we're going to be all over, because I know how this is already going to go tonight yep. and I'm looking forward <laughs> to it. But I got to say, like, I've been looking forward to giving Josh shit about this elimination all week. And that was Amanda Why? getting voted in and then her doing the dumbass move of calling Tori down, knowing that more than likely it's going to be a physical elimination because the last elimination for women was puzzles. Yeah. Yeah. So she calls down Tori because she has a, you know, a rivalry, a vendetta, whatever you want to call it for whatever reason. But yeah, nobody even knows. Yeah, I don't even Tori know. Tori doesn't even know. But, you know, <laughs> but so she calls. Like, no, Tino, no Nani's not really exceptional at anything. No, exactly. Like, and like, that was my thing is like, don't even if you don't call Emmy down. Most likely it was going to be physical. Why would you go? I mean, why would you go for the most physical person in there besides Casey? Like, that makes no sense. You, I would say, like, yeah, no, that was just a terrible, yeah, terrible. So, yeah, Nani was only the time. only choice. I was I, screaming at my TV I, watching that, and you didn't choose it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like it's like having a it's like having a a, a, a true false question on a test, right? Everyone, <laughs> for some reason, you still got it wrong. I don't get it. I don't <laughs> get it. <laughs> it's so true it's so true i like i said i was doing the same thing i'm sitting here yeah. watching it with audra and we're like all right she's gonna pick nani nope she's gonna be stupid yep yeah. she was stupid oh, i mean God. you had no chance no matter what it was i mean if it was gonna come down to a puzzle you might have gotten tori because we've seen tori struggle with puzzles and then we've seen her actually kick butt with puzzles so right. you know you yeah. got a 50 50 chance there but no she goes against tori and then well, and my whole thing is it's like there was a rope in the fucking sand like I, I I'm just I don't understand I, that was my first hint that there was going to be something physical going on that night because there were the little rocket things but then there was a huge ass rope wrapped around in the middle of the sand and you could see it while she was standing down there with TJ and she was asking him like well what's the elimination and he's like well you're not going to be doing the same thing that they just did and it's like you're standing in a ring right now. You like, got my maybe God. 30 minutes for production to set up for another elimination and for you to get changed, get your helmet on, all that. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I mean, obviously it's 2020 hindsight for us because we're able to look back on this and I've listened to other podcasts and, 
you know, I think Amanda knew she fucked up because Tori said when they were walking back to change, like she was asking her, like, do you think I might need like knee pads? And was like having just like a completely like normal conversation, not an on camera conversation. Wow. So she was already kind of oh. like, you know, like kind of knew what the deal was, but I give it to her. She still put a fight up. Like she didn't quit. And I give it up to her. I give it up for her. That. Yeah. She fought, she fought hard. She, uh, Amanda did a whole lot better than I thought she was considering the level of threat that Tori is supposed to have as a physical competitor. Like Amanda did a whole lot better than I thought it was reminiscent, not as it wasn't as reminiscent, but it was close quarters to when like Fessy went against Nelson, like everybody yeah. right. thought Fessy was just going to come in and sweep the play. And it was just like, uh, it didn't really go the way that we, we thought it was going to go. Like Amanda put up a way better fight than I thought she would, that, that, than, than I thought was ever going to come out of her. So I got to give her props for that. And I know like Amanda's got a lot of fans and they're really upset right now, but the memes that are coming out about this the situation. Bro, like Aussie fans? Yeah, yes. bro. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, you got the shirt, but I'm just saying. Broly, yes. the one where they got Broly pushing down. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude, that meme is fucking amazing. We'll we'll put this on. We'll put that meme up with this on YouTube so y'all can Please see do. it. I'm and, gonna and, I'm gonna uh, put it up on the video on the screen and, right now. It's gonna be showing on it's, YouTube. So. It's not quite the level, you know, when she picks her up, when she tosses that ball and then picks her up and starts walking. Oh. It's not quite bananas backpack, but it's close. And we I I was talking to you about it. It's we were talking Amanda Satchel, a Manny Pack. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> bro, there's some the fire fire content coming out from this, oh, and bro. it was great to see, it, bro. Like. When she picked her up, I was just like, oh, my God, she is really just going on for the ride. Like she, dude, she, she bought admission tickets to her own like elimination. She was like, please take me home. There we go. Dude, like, Amanda was just like clung on to Tori's side like a toddler in the freaking supermarket. I'm like, what are you doing? Like tripper or like uh, do something. What are why are we just holding on going walking, for the ride? She like literally just watched herself get carried to the ball like it was just some like, you know, curbside pickup. I was yeah. like, no, you're, you're going to get sent home. Oh, and she even like she even brought her back leg up and wrapped it around the other side of Tori like to cling on harder and I'm like what right. are you doing I would be like flipping and flopping and twisting like getting no bitch you're going we're going down we're down. getting in the sand <laughs> yeah. I the leg something <laughs> 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 uh, yeah you got to sweep the leg at that point um but you know so real quick tori goes up one nothing and then they the ball drops again from the drone it's basically balls in with a uh, a fucking drone dropping in the middle of yeah. it but yeah um it drops a second one uh tori gets there and amanda kind of tries to die for it and like we were talking about she just gives her a stiff arm and buries her face in that sand oh. and you just see Amanda's life just the the whole effort everything she had was gone right there her soul yeah. left her body for a good 0.2 seconds and it, it was oh, yeah. done you know <laughs> and you see those scenes and it's like all right you know that person played competitive sports because that's just that little bit extra like look I'm not trying to be dirty I'm just letting you know it's over yeah, yeah you're well, fucking done Tori even that's got that's it with that's a sliding hip check yeah uh, yeah when it, the three way uh thing, what was the name of that one when Kyle um, messed up the uh, boom, messed up the boom raiders, boom raiders. Well, okay, when Casey, whenever Casey was like, "Yeah, I'm about to, t I'm about to uh, show you what being an athlete was really about," and she completely yep. leveled her. I was just like, uh, "Yeah, send that to your kids." Like, like she definitely played football before. Like Casey was brutal, and Casey's not like huge, huge either. No, no. The one that got me, and I'll send you the video that she made because she slows it down and she replays it a couple times. Is the second hit the second where time Tori's they coming downhill and Casey's coming uphill? So Tori's got all the momentum, but yeah. Casey's got that angle, and they hit, and Casey flings backward off the side and hits the side she of the like trench, bounces off the wall a couple. Dude, times, you like, know she hits Tori hard as shit because Tori's coming downhill and falls backwards back uphill. Yeah. You know, so that impact was it's wild. It's gnarly. We'll send you the yeah. video, dude. Yeah. It's gnarly. You guys see me that because, dude, yeah. like, because Tori got some weight on her. So she's got that. Oh, yeah. Thing. Like, Casey took that whole everything. Like, like just the fact that she could be going that type of speed and still be standing afterwards, like, Casey a beast. 
Oh is yeah, no, perfect. she's no joke. I know people people rag on her because she ain't got like a really you know vibrant social game. She's not you know she's the calm player in the house, but she's a beast. Nobody wants to see her in that shit. Like it's hard. Like I feel like Casey could be a more entertaining challenger if we had a little bit more of a, a physical inept like group, right? Like if we still had like the Georgia, Jenny, Emily's, even like, even Anissa, cause like when it comes to some physical stuff, Anissa will like, she may not go like five rounds, but she'll give you two to three good ones. You know what I mean? Fuller cast where they could go a little bit more like physical, a little bit more intense with the females. Cause like you can't do that when you got Big T and Amanda and, 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 and these rookie girls that just don't get it. Right. I feel like that's where Kate will be able to thrive a little bit better. Cause then she can really just show people like, I don't have to talk a lot because I'll entertain you with how I perform. Yes. Well, see, and the thing for me is like, I saw her in Big Brother and you when she outperformed Fessy in some physical competitions in Big Brother, I was like, oh, okay, so she's not a joke because no. like, you know, people can hate on Fessy all they want, but to play D1 football, you're at a different level of different everybody level. else. Yeah. And regardless yeah. of where you play D1, D1 is at a different level. Yeah. It is, it um, is. People get Fessy crap because it's like for you to be D1 going against all these other guys that weren't even college athletes, he has not physically dominated the way that he should have. Right. You know, right. Exactly. And I say that too personally, just from my perspective, in the sense of I was a former D1 athlete, came in as a rookie in a season that was physically stacked. Yes. Right. Right. And yeah. well, you know what I'm saying? So my background lived up to his expectation in context to a high level of competition where he hasn't had that same level of well-rounded competition and has not performed as physically as he should have. So I think that's why people go at him so hard. Cause it's like, yeah. And, and for anyone who's hasn't seen it or doesn't remember, I'm going to, I'm going to put this out there for Marlon right now. He ain't even got to say it. Go out to YouTube right now, search the elimination of Marlon and Jordan versus Leroy and Ty. And watch what Mar Marlon single-handedly keeps them from winning. He knocks out Leroy and is holding Ty back. And Ty's like six inches from the bell and still can't ring that motherfucker and gives Jordan enough time to go over there and do this. And that's what we're saying is like there's a different level when there's a D1 athlete in there compared to the everyday person that is in really good that shape. That goes to the gym and works out. And exactly. Or does CrossFit all yeah. the time. Yeah. You know, exactly. and I, I just I also wanted to point out that I, th I think, you know, kind of going back to what you were saying a second ago about why people kind of go at Fessy that way. I, I think it's different for someone like you, like you said, who was a D1 athlete who has played on the challenge, who has gone on and dominated. It's different for you to make that judgment than it is for somebody who sits at home on their couch and eats popcorn and watches Fessy every week. You know what I mean? Like that's that's a, that's a different thing. So, like, I, I respect your opinion on you know fessy and and stuff like that you know but at the same time when i see people like just completely ripping him apart on online it's like okay but what can you do you know true true i feel you on that it's just like okay if you were in this position you wouldn't even be you know you'd be gone first week you know trying exactly. to talk to the guy you know what i mean because i yeah and because he's still going against some some guys that are that are that are up there you know what i mean you still got mm -hmm. nelson in there you still had daryl you still have uh, um, Corey, uh, uh, the, oh my God, that, uh, uh, the rookie from this season, um, the big black dude from this season, uh, Kels. Kels. Like, Kels. Oh, they bring him back. Oh, I hope dude. so. Corey, Corey Lay. Corey Lay. Yo, all right. Josh is so excited right now. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> Corey Lay is Josh's favorite. Like his daughter talks to him on Twitch and all this. So like, this is his boy. I, I'm really excited to see. I'm really honestly excited to see Corey because I feel like uh, we just need that representation. Absolutely. I hope they bring it back because it's like, bro, we have a guy that's LGBT, you know, Q plus half the alphabet. He can perform yeah. physically, right? I feel like uh, I feel like he's going to be able to, and I think he's going to have a really good social game. You know what I mean? Like he was just in a position where like, point. He, he, he couldn't be social. Like he was just, he was that, that 
easy vote. So it's just like he couldn't really do anything. So I hope they bring him back because I think he could do pretty well. I hope so too. He only lives two and a half hours away. That's another reason why. Oh, from Portland? Yeah, he lives up in Seattle. Oh, another yeah. reason why I like Corey is look at that elimination. He he basically carried three other people to a, oh, and, and he won on his back. Come on now. Come on now. That's CT, CT episode two. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like that dude's a competitor, man. Representation for all, like everything encompassed his level to play the game. Like, he's likable. He's personable. Like, I hope dude, I hope dude comes back for sure. Like, he deserves it. He's, yeah. he's one of yeah. Right. And then um, I believe I saw somewhere, I think it was Twitter. Somebody was like, oh, yeah, you should start a beef with Corey Lay. That way you guys could have like a good little rivals team. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, how does that even start though? <laughs> like, right, like it's just like we're in two completely different like generations and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, nah, nah. I mean, nah. It, it wouldn't even. I don't even know how that would even be able to get kicked off. That would be some messy drama stuff. But mm. and I know like a lot of people come for me because they're like, oh, you know, starting beef with cast members isn't going to get you back on the show or whatever the case may be. And it's just like, I think a lot of people forget that like. I'm pretty much a fan with with experience at this point because it's like I haven't been on the show in forever, right? So I'm really just more like a fan with like an inside viewpoint. So it's just like it's so weird to me because it's like I can't say anything negative about anybody's like fan favorite without them thinking that I'm trying to get casted. And it's like, bro, like I'm a fan just like everybody else now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, I don't have to always have something good to say about this person. And then two, it's just like, I'm just giving my perspective on the game as a, really, I'm giving my perspective on the game just as a competitive person, not even, Absolutely. you know well, what I mean? Trying to get back on a challenge or whatever. So it's just so weird to me that like, all these, it, it's so funny because it always ends up going into insults. They'll stick to protein shakes because I bring up valid points and then when they can't rebuttal them, it's like, Oh, you just wish you were on the show. Go take a protein shake. And it's just like, all right, bro. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're Don't come for me. Bro. Don't I got to say this. Me. Like before I, before, like I really started following you. And then before we had the interview, like when you would like say something, I'd be like, is, is, is this coming from like a, like an area of like, he thinks he's trash. Like, like whoever you'd be talking about, like, is he, and then when I talk to you and we've had conversations about it, it's not, you're just like, you give honest insight and you're being actually really objective. Like, cause yeah. even when we talk about CT, you're like, bro, like he's really, really good in certain aspects and other things. I think he could work better on, or he's not as great at, and you put up valid points with it. So it's not like, it's coming from a point of hate by any means. It's right. just coming from a point of being objective. Yeah, exactly. It's like I'm on the outside looking in just like everybody else. I just have a little bit more, I guess, insight because I've been there. You know what I mean? It's like a commentator, right? It's like somebody yeah. who played football, they retired, right? And then they go mm-hmm. commentate ESPN. They're going to be able to be a little bit more objective about their opinion. And it's not about like, you know what I mean? Them trying to be like, oh, I should be in a Hall of Fame over this guy. It's just... It's just opinion, you know, it's just. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah but, absolutely. Uh, so anyway, yeah, getting getting back to the uh, getting back to the, <laughs> the elimination. <laughs> so, we already knew how this was going to go. Oh, tonight, yeah. So. Uh, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not worried about it. Um, yeah. So Tori, Tori wins. She goes two out, shuts, shuts Amanda out. But what I wanted to really credit Tori for is literally she drops that ball in that barrel and she immediately turns around. She runs to Amanda. She wraps Amanda up in a hug, tells her you did, you are a fucking fighter. You did amazing. And then she apologizes to this woman, this woman who like hates her and drags her all the fucking time. And she apologizes for sending her home and you know like I just, how do you I just don't get how like how do people hate Tori I just don't get it I don't get it but the fans aren't even focusing on that part they're po- they're focusing on what happens a minute later when Tori's all excited about and winning. she goes and yeah and she goes and flexes in the in the in the camera and she says your girl's back and the fans are pissed about that and it's like yeah. <laughs> what? yo but on the side note have you oh, Marlon Oh, oh yeah. my God, that is so petty. They and, just look for reasons to hate Tori. That's real, they, real they, quick. They, did you see her traps when she flexed, though? Bro, I'm telling you, bro, she's trying out for the Cowboys next week. Like, dude, like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> she looks, look, she looks like she can play fullback. Right you put me in a hall bra with Tori, I'm not taking nothing off because she might take me out, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, bro. Like, 
Now I really want to see her and Jenny in an elimination. Again. You know what I mean? Like, bro. bro. And you know what? You know what's so funny? You know what's so funny? I, I, I'm one of those people that, like, I've been watching the challenge so long that, like, I'm at the point to where, like, if I could just get, like, little small bits and pieces of the stuff that we want as fans, I would be ecstatic. Like, I would oh, just yeah. love Jenny and Tori in a mildly physical daily challenge. You know what I mean? Where they're really just pitted against each other. Maybe make it teams or something like that. Like, I'll just take that. Oh, I want for real. That final together. Like, I want Marlon and Fessy in a hall brawl. Yeah. Bruh, he couldn't deal with Nelson. He could barely deal yeah. with Nelson. Bro. No. I'm, I walk around 255. Ooh, I'm just saying, that's a damn, fan. Marlon. That's what I want to see. I'm, I'm six foot 255, bro. If I get in there with Fessy, like, like, like he says, I'm built different. Okay. Like, like I, I, I'm built different. And like, literally, Fessy, I'm definitely built different. I'm 255, 16, 15% body fat. He walking around like borderline Pillsbury Doughboy. It's, it's a completely different ball game of yeah. athletes. Like completely different. Like he, he went to Chattanooga D one. Don't get me wrong. He went D one. Yeah. I went Big Twelve D one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was did. gonna say just. I was on a district championship D one team. I was on an yeah. eleven one D one team. I was on a. We went to a bowl game every year. D one team. Like even yeah. within D one, there's levels. Meek Mills, there's levels to this. Like, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> if Fessy, I'm going to put you like this, and I don't know, and this might be kind of cocky to say this, but athletes know other athletes, right? And when you can, you know what I'm saying? So think about it. All the crap that I've talked about Fessy on social media, not once has he called me out on anything, ever. No. Mm -mm. Not once, right? No. And I don't know if that's just like he thinks he's above me or he just don't want that smoke. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I think Fessy's very calculated about what he talks about. You know what I mean? Like, 100%. I think that he, like, because even if you watch those videos right after Double Agents that he did on IG that he deleted, and he was like, nobody wants to see me in a physical. And then he paused he said, for a Nobody his head. in the history of the challenge can beat me in a physical elimination. And then and his like, words. What? And then pauses his me. Words. Just, his We're words, not yeah. going to talk about CT. He's a go. Let's keep it pushing. And it's like, bro, you can't. That means once you say, but everything you said before that is non-existent at this point. Well, and you can't say I can be everybody in the history of the challenge, except this one. No, that one person is included in the everybody. And, number one. And number two, there's more than just that one person who can fucking beat you, Fessy. I'm sorry. Bro, and yeah. like, and kind of switching onto a, the, the other show, like, just watching Brad go against Derek and all stars like Brad still got it. Like I wouldn't mind seeing yeah. him on the main show again. He got the sauce, bro. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's just like, it's the beard. It's <laughs> <laughs> bro. Nehemiah and that beard killed me. Oh, oh my, my God. God. That was amazing. That was amazing. But, all right. So when they're all done with the female elimination and they're saying goodbye and all of that, TJ calls Amanda out on her bullshit devil character that she plays for the show. And, you know, she does her, her shy little smile and everything like that. But he fucking calls her ass out and he's like, you're a nice girl. And this, this devil character that you play is bullshit. It's all her And I, I fucking loved that he called her out on that because like, that's, I think that's the thing that bothers me a lot about Amanda is she constantly like, you know, talks about how she doesn't like fake people and she can't stand fakeness and all this. And yet, like everything you do on the show is not authentic to who you are. And it's it's clear, like we can tell, you know, that this isn't who you are. You're trying to be something that you're not. And it, it bugs me. <laughs> so I'm glad he called her out on that. Anyway, so we move on uh, and we start taking votes for the males. And we end up with Emmanuel with six votes two votes for Nelson and one vote for Devin and Tori and Nelson start flipping out on each other, fighting over the fact that Tori ended up voting for Nelson. And she's like, bro, you voted for me first, which confused me. Cause again, I thought she had like told him it was going to be okay in the beginning, but apparently that was not what she meant and not what was going on in the moment. It just, maybe they edited it, edited it to look like that. I don't, I don't I, really know that. I'm so glad I'm not the only person that has trouble saying edited, 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 no. edited. Uh, and, and so anyway, so Emmanuel gets down. And what I found interesting is as he's walking down to the arena or the pit or whatever it's called this season, I can't even remember. Lair. 
the lair. Is it the lair this season? It's okay. the lair. <laughs> yeah. So he's walking down to the lair for uh, to go down there for his elimination. And Tori is shouting out to him. She's like, don't pick Devin. Don't pick Devin. And he doesn't listen. He ends up picking Devin for this one. Dumb. I, I think that that was just more rookie. I think that was more lack of experience just because I don't, it's, it's like counting cards in Vegas. Like, you know what I mean? Like you got to realize like, okay, we've gone physical. We've gone, you know, it's a puzzle. We've gone, you know, weird out, out, out of the box. So we're probably coming back to a puzzle. We're probably coming back to physical or something like that. So I just think, I think him being a rookie, he didn't realize that like, dude, it's most likely going to be a puzzle because production has already pulled all their cats out of the bag. You did a well, physical one already, right? Yep, With exactly. Rockets. The girls did the physical one already. It's like your best bet is not to go against, you know, the puzzle guy because that's probably what's coming. Yeah. It wanted, I did. I, this is one thing I didn't understand, though, is why wouldn't they have voted Kyle in? Not one vote for Kyle, not the one snake. vote for CT. Because, well, this is my thing, though. It's like, I feel like voting Kyle in might have been the better bet because it's like, one, Kyle's going to pick the person that he is most likely to be, right? Right. Right, which may have still been Emmanuel. But I feel like that's why I was saying like that last minute politicking. I feel like Tori could have campaigned to get Kyle sent in because then she could have got CT to vote Kyle in because CT yeah. doesn't doesn't want to run with uh, 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 Kyle, right? Because he knows right. that he's off of him, and then the rest of the house would have followed suit. Because if you get CT on your side, right, and you throw up somebody that everybody feels like they have a potential chance against in a puzzle, then everybody would have voted Kyle. Then Tori could have saved herself with Devin and Emmanuel, because she could have been like, well, my hands are clean. I didn't do nothing. Right. right? And then Kyle's a, Kyle's a fair guy to beat in the elimination round, as long as it's not pole wrestle. Could you imagine if, like, somehow, like, it worked out to be Kyle and Nelson in a three-puzzle elimination? They would have been there for four hours. Bro. Oh, my God. we still be watching. Oh, my God, bro. <laughs> like, all right, hey, just throw back to earlier in the year when – um. I think it was right after Corey got eliminated and Nelson was like walking the path and Devin and Kyle were up on the patio and he's like, so there's going to be two of us up. So I got a 33% chance, bro. I fucking died. I died on that shit. Nelsonisms. Like, and I, Bro, I love Scubanelli, bro. He's like one of my favorite players too because he's such a good competitor and he brings like such fire confessionals because they're just, non-intentionally hilarious yeah no like he's that guy that's not trying to be funny but it just always comes off like always always it, funny but yeah i was i was shocked oh I was yeah shocked in vote kyle like i mean i guess obviously when they say i right, protect the vets i guess that's that's really where it came from but i was just looking at the fact that like no one up there really wanted to run the final with kyle no why wouldn't you vote him in that makes, you know what I mean? It's just like, you really are putting yourself at risk because it's like, okay, well, I don't want to run with this guy because I don't think he's going to be able to cut it in the final, but I'm going to keep him here and run a risk of potentially going against him when somebody like, all right, let's say he goes down there and he does call out Emmanuel. Emmanuel actually has a pretty good chance of sending him home. I, I don't think Kyle would ever call Nelson out because he would be too afraid of the potential of it being a physical period in the discussion, mm -hmm. right? Kyle knows he's not that great at puzzles. So it's just like, I think Kyle would have been a way safer bet. Well, even their drama earlier in the year with Emmanuel, not even drama, just Emmanuel fucking with Kyle being like, oh, you're chicken to call me in. Like, I'm surprised he didn't call Kyle in. Um, right. yeah, I didn't so, think about that. You know, so with all that being said, obviously we, uh, you know, we get Emmanuel down there. He decides to call uh, Devin down, even though Tori's shouting at him not to do it. <laughs> he should have listened to her and you know what it puts in and i i i feel for tori because it puts her in a, a really bad spot she's got the man that she's in a relationship with or like you know hooking up with uh, right. and then it's like her her number one ally that she came into the game with and she's gonna be fucked either way you know and they're like right. super close friends outside of the game too like it's not even just like a, a friend in the game you, you, like they're close outside yeah. of the game oh. Yeah. yeah, like they like, like they kick it outside of the show. They we, go on vacations together. Like, yeah, we were just friends. we were just talking to Tori and she's like, oh, you know, he FaceTimes and says, you know, Merry or Happy Thanksgiving to my mom and all this. So like they're they're homies. 
Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But uh, dude, I was surprised in that. So the the elimination they go into is the three puzzles. The very first puzzle is the, the it's the color one. So you have to get the every color. Oh, it's like Sudoku, but with color. Color, exactly. with color. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that one, no, no lie, that I'm I'm good with puzzles, but that one might have messed me up. Like the Sudoku with numbers is kind of mind bending enough, and then you throw just as color patterns. Like I might have struggled on that one too, and I was surprised. I was surprised, man. Well, did is yeah. He and it wasn't by like a small amount. He smoked him. Yeah, I was I was kind of bugging on that because I was like, okay, well, you know, it kind of excited me though because I felt like I felt like this season Devin really needed that uh, uh, humbling experience because I didn't like how he handled the situation with Tori when Tori uh, had to switch 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 teams right because she got infiltrated with it right so. I don't like how he handled that because it's like, bro, like at the end of the day, you got to you got to take care of your butt first. And if you're the most losing team there, there's no way to save yourself unless your team wins. Like, he, like you know what I mean? Like, I'm no good. Like, it's like Tori's no good to your game, Devin, if she's at home or if she's on a team that's constantly losing and she's next on a chopping block. She's no good yeah. to you. For him to just be like, you betrayed me and blah, blah, blah. It's like, bro, like take a chill pill. She got to save herself first. And it wasn't even about like screwing you over. And it was really more Kyle's fault than it was hers. Exactly. Kyle's the one who put her in, in that situation. Right. Like, why are you not over here jumping down Kyle's throat? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, but so that was weird to me, though. So then coming full circle, being in this final, right? Yeah. Like, I just like Devin couldn't really, I don't feel like Devin should have been so hard on Tori because it's like, bro, you knew that she had a relationship with both of y'all. So like, like once again, bro, she's just in a lose, lose situation. Yep. Right? Right. If you yeah. really, really talking about y'all ride or die, then you gotta be able to see that from her perspective and be like, all right, look, you, you know what I mean, regardless of what happens, it's a lose, lose for you. So I'm not about to jump down your throat either way. Yeah. Look, I'm not going to speak for Tori by any means, but just looking at it from an outside perspective, if I were to put myself in her position, because we know, like just as fans of the challenge that these surprises that TJ just hit him with aren't the last surprises that are coming, even in this episode, we're going to get to those. Right. But oh, yeah. looking at it from Tori's perspective, I would be more apt to want to run a final with a man. Well, just based on his competitiveness. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, his well, and obviously he's at least decent at puzzles. He yeah. just fucking smashed the first one and, right in front right. of your eyes. And don't so. get me wrong. Devin surprised me this year with that last uh, daily, the one that CT smoked everybody in where they had to run across above the water and grab those canisters. Oh, throwing the little bombs. Yeah. Devin looked like fucking Steve Young out there for a second. I was like, okay. I mean, you know, that's a glimpse. I saw a glimpse. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. That was... Devin is I a think, sleeper. I mean, I think Devin is like... Like if Devin took even twenty to thirty percent more, or put more like twenty to thirty percent more into his physical ability, like he could potentially be unstoppable. Just because, like, agreed. Everybody comes into that house from a political standpoint. Standpoint probably telling themselves, "I want to work with Devin," right? And that puts so much power in his hand until we start getting so close to the final to where now you become more of a liability because politically in in intelligence, you got me as far as I needed to go. Now you're kind of dead weight. So if if he got like 20 to 30% more like physical ability, you know what I mean? He came in there with like maybe a two pack, you know what I mean? Instead of a beer beer belly. (laughs) He's got to lose that pony keg. You know what I mean? Like in two seasons. He'll probably have a win under, win under his belt. You know what I mean? Oh, if, I can win, see it. I don't know if he won this season or not. Yeah, w- yet to be told. I, we got one more episode. But right. so uh, Emmanuel gets to the next puzzle, and the next puzzle is nine squares. Uh, and each square is a single number ranging from one through nine, and they have to align it so in every direction it equals the same number across the board. When added up. Yeah. When added he had, up. He what, 15? I think Tori ends up yelling it yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh Emmanuel and like this is a pretty standard puzzle, you know. So Tori knew what it was immediately as soon as yeah. she as soon as Emmanuel told her it was numbers one through nine, whatever. And so yeah, she she starts yelling out 
giving a manuel tips trying to tell him what numbers to put in the middle and she's like trying yeah. to you know like show him with her hands uh behind casey and nani's back and then nelson fucking calls her ass out i actually really love that i was okay with it because i mean like 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 if 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 you're playing a smart game babe they're already down there you ain't you there's nothing you can do let them let yeah. the best win don't hurt your game you don't know what's gonna happen next because it's like you know what I mean, it could have been another one of those like, uh, um, you know, where you play favorites, you know, elimination, right? Daily challenges right before the end. And now they're coming for you. Like you should have just closed your mouth, sucked it up and just let the best man win. Like and That's when you start using. <laughs> that was your best option. Yeah, she should have been using plurals. She should have been. Let's go, guys. Yeah. Got and you. she should or just yeah. be quiet. Yeah. Let's go, team. One of y'all. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because this this bullshit. I want them both. Okay, well they can't both win, Tori. They can't right. both win. Only one yeah. of them's gonna win. And right now, you're actively making sure that Emmanuel moves on before Devin even gets to the second puzzle. Like, so at that point, it's like you're clearly picking a side in this in this fun. elimination. Which okay, that's fine, but you're doing it publicly right before the final, and that's just I don't know. To me, it's it just wasn't. Look. It wasn't. It wasn't a good look for her. Yeah. yeah. No, so what was even more uh, interesting to me was almost immediately right after that, Devin finishes that first puzzle, moves on to the second one. And CT starts yelling out to Devin, trying to tell him how to what to do on that second puzzle, because he's like, fuck this. I'm going to help Devin because Devin's his boy in this game. Yep. And Devin stops him and he's like, no, don't help me. Well, Devin had it. He looked at it and he knew what it was right away. Oh, I yeah. mean, I think Devin just knew what it was and didn't want the extra distraction. Me yeah. personally, just like I, as a fan on the outside looking in, I don't like the fact that they let them give hints to people during the elimination round. Me and personally, I don't like that. I mean, like obviously in this position, in this particular situation, it's great for drama, it's great for TV to see yeah. you know, Corey and Nelson going at it. But like, I, I think from a competitive like standpoint, like that, it, it 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 gets under my skin a little bit because. It's just, I don't know, man. It just gets out of my skin a little bit because it's just like now we don't we don't know if we don't know if this person won because they were good or if the people that were up there are good. Like, because I think it's like two, three seasons ago, it was like you had to put there was an elimination round where you had to yes. put all the seasons in correct order for yeah, the West. And, and D what? was in elimination and Wes gave her yeah. all the answers. And, and right. Was. So it's mm -hmm. like D didn't win, Wes did. Well, and even even to this season, actually kind of going back to what we were talking about with Emmy is CT helped Emmy put that puzzle together. And right. if he hadn't have, Big T might have beat her because she was close. Doing that bad. No, no, she wasn't. Big T gets a lot of shit and she's she's like one of those sleepers like like kind of like what you're saying with Devin, if she put like an extra 20 to 30% into it, she could, she could be a force because her social game's on point too. You oh, know what so I mean? Amazing. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Like she, she, they can't do a rival season with her because they'd have to pick some really small shit. Like what she did to Tori and double agents. And nobody right. really remembers that because it wasn't even that big of a, it wasn't that big of a deal. It was just like, yeah. it's just, just a stretch, but yeah. Yeah. yeah no, if no, there was a rivals, it'd be CT with, Big T, kind of like what they did to CT with Veronica. I guess, yeah, yeah that would be the only situation. So anyways, uh, Devin uh, gets to that numbered puzzle. He smokes through that. He puts it together right away, oh. gets to the next one. And at this point, Tori has another lapse in judgment and finally tells him, tells a man, well, hey, all the numbers have to equal 15, put five in the middle. And then finally, a man, well, can figure it out. And it instantly made me think of that part. Uh, <laughs> It was the daily where Anissa got hurt and they had to do long division and they switched to Devin. And he goes, y'all can't do long division. How are you guys still alive? I know. You know what I mean? And I was just like, oh my gosh. So they get up to the next puzzle. It's once again, another colors uh, where they have to organize the puzzle pieces to fit colors to match up. It's uh, gemstones and, and diamonds. Yeah. yeah. Diamonds with different colors. And it gets pretty close. Like I thought a man well had him because he put it together and he hits that thing and they go to check and there's one mess up on it. Yeah. And he got Catholic a little flustered. Down. He just didn't have all the colors aligned. Yeah. See, this, this is the thing about somebody like Emmanuel. It was the, it was the, it was 
Okay. And this is obviously up just for sub, you know, just, you know, I guess what subjugation or, or whatever. I don't know the word, where it is, but Emmanuel had a really, really good shot at beating Devin. Emmanuel is a whole lot better at puzzles than people think, right? I think, in all honesty, when you put everything into perspective, Emmanuel had already done one elimination round, which was endurance, and won. Wasn't expecting to go back in there. Goes back in and is pretty much neck and neck with Devin, who was supposed to be the puzzle king. And even yeah. on the puzzle that he lost on, he did. It wasn't that he didn't really like get the concept of the puzzle. He just didn't. 100% solve it correctly. He understood the assignment. It just took him a little extra step. Um, 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 I think that played into just him being a rookie. You know what I mean? Like that, that first, first time jitters, like if we were to play that, uh, that same exact scenario or something similar to like that, you know, like let's say next season, if he's in the same situation, I think he'd beat them. Agreed. Yeah. I think that's a good, I, I, I don't think a that's a stretch yeah. at all. I think if he or, – or or even this or even this perspective, if he had gone into an elimination round, like let's say earlier in the season and won mm-hmm. and just got those initial nervousness jitters out and had a little bit of confidence going in there, I think he would have beat Devin in that, in, that, in that elimination round. Oh, yeah. Like, so I know, you know, he's, he got a lot of hate because of the drama that went on between him and Big T recently online. Um, wait, who, but, wait, what? Yeah, I mean, so oh, ooh, yeah. I I don't know the whole been, story. Look, like, I've been out of it for a while because I've been working on other stuff. But wait, wait, y'all got to put me on game. What happened? All right, you know more about this than I do. I just with, the, with Emmanuel. Yeah, and Big T. So, so in the in the episode where Big T had gone into an elimination, Emmanuel had given a confessional, uh, saying that, or he was talking to he was talking to Emmy or something. He was like, "Look, I just don't feel like." Big T deserves to be here. She doesn't deserve to be in the final. Well, when Big T saw the episode, she started putting stuff on Instagram, talking about, you know, um, how fake people are and how she's starting to learn that these people that she thought were her friends are not really her friends. And they're saying all this nasty stuff behind her back. And so they just start going back and forth on their Instagram stories. And they did this for like two days, just kind of arguing publicly about this issue. And like, you know, it was just, it was a really awkward, I, I mean, I can't even, they, their stories were like little mini novels. Like I had to screenshot them and read them from my picture because oh my. the story on Instagram isn't long enough to read what they were writing. Um, but yeah, they, they went back and forth for like two days over that. She was, she was really upset and her feelings were very hurt. And, you know, Emmanuel was just kind of telling her, he's like, you know, just, I mean, <laughs> I, I, just didn't think that you really wanted to be there. And apparently at some point near the beginning of the season, Big T had had some kind of meltdown and like packed all her bags and was trying to leave the show. And Emmanuel Uh, like went and like talked her down or whatever. And so he was kind of using that. And he's like, look, you even tried to leave the game. Like you don't want to be here as much as the other people. So I don't want you in the final with me. Like you can't be mad at me about that. Yeah, it just it was such an ugly like situation. But anyway, it it transpired into a man well getting like death threats from fans and just what? all yeah, yeah, bro. Big T's yeah. fans. Big T is Miss Congeniality, but like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. like it's like America's favorite. You know what I mean? So you go for her, like people are definitely gonna come at you hard because her whole image is like the fun loving like you root for her underdog like mentality but i mean if emmanuel is dropping facts you know what i mean like that she's packing bags and trying to leave like y'all can't i don't feel like it's right to be mad at him for being like yo i don't know if i really want to run a final with you in my opinion hurt's not in it right, right. like it's like if you if you if you already trying to pack your bags and we haven't even made it to like the halfway point mentally or physically you're just not in the game. I, well, I missed all of that. I didn't. Know, I didn't. I, I, I. The last thing I saw from Big. The last thing I saw that was big was Big T had posted. Uh, I guess that she's uh, taking kind of a retirement or something like that from the challenge because she's got some big gig. Um, I don't know what it is that she's doing, but. She, Cool. She got ex- she got accepted to uh, Le Cordon school. Bleu. Yeah, Le Cordon Bleu. It's Ooh, like yeah. one of the biggest. Yeah. Bring her uh, on his new show. 
<laughs> oh, people are tagging her in it already. Like, I mean, I was, uh, she about to go get them chop chop suey skills. You might as well put her yeah. on there real quick, <laughs> right? But <laughs> then they got uh, bef- Naya, Naya over here flying uh, private jets, cooking cordon bleu. So they might as well put her on there too, like. Right. Oh, she's going to win that if she goes on. I've been watching her on, like, the shit she posts on Instagram looks good as hell. Oh, my gosh. She has a... Yeah, bro. Like, I'm like, shit, man, send me the recipe. She's got a whole right. website. Oh, my God. It's so good. I look through it every once in a while. I'm like, I can't make any of this, but it looks fucking delicious. <laughs> but what I was trying to say earlier, I think a man well, like, other than a few select other guys, like, I think maybe Kels, Corey Lay, and maybe Logan, if he can kind of get more of a... a a political game going are the only ones I'd want to see back in a future season. Uh, a man yeah. well being the main one though. I think he could be a real threat long term. Uh, I hate the fact that uh, Jimmy called him the knockoff Jordan or whatever, but yeah. Well, apparently uh, Jordan's discount. called him that. But he's displaying some potential to be that type of guy that's extremely well rounded, right? I don't know if his political game is going to be there just because, like, there's probably going to be, like, a struggle with, like, language. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he's mm-hmm. from Romania. But I think that um, as far as just actual performance and daily challenges and different things like that, like, he's 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 shown some sparks of ability that, like, I mean, he could be, I'm not going to say the next Jordan, but he could be one of those utility players like him where it's just like, bro, He's well-rounded and above average in a lot of different things. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? Like, so it's just like, if you go against him, understand you have a very, very fair shot at losing because the dude is good. Yeah. Oh absolutely. yeah, absolutely. I don't know, bro. Logan though. You think Logan coming back? I think, I, I think he's competitively, he would be good. Not okay. maybe not good for TV, but he would be competitively good. I think if anyone else other than maybe Nelson goes down to that elimination against where he went against a man, well, he probably wins in my opinion. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 Logan. Yeah. 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 Logan competitor wise. I, I agree. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. TV wise. Not really, but yeah, I, it'd be like, it'd be like a Casey, I mean, but in male, you know, where it's like the competitive nature is great. It's not so, not so exciting for TV, but. All right. So I, I was talking to Karina and we literally had to pause the episode like right after the eliminations. Cause I started thinking about this because there's been like a lot of complaints about the season and it, you know, whether it's the format, you know, all the rookies, all this. And like, I stopped for a second. I was like, Karina, I got to tell you this. And I want your guys' opinion on this. You and uh, Marlon and Josh is if you strip away, like all the spy theme, like, let's just get rid of that, you know, strip that all away. And you really look at the season to me, if it looks like three seasons that we've already seen put together, like the first half was a new fresh me, right? You got a vet paired with a rookie. Yep. Yeah. And then the second half was like a new cutthroat. Three teams. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? And now this last part, depending on how they work the final, it's almost like a free agents, but now they, you know, but we'll see how it plays out. We're, we're not fully it through it yet. Free agents vibe, but there's probably another twist in there at some point. This season is a smorgasbord. I think they just, I, I think it was partly due to like probably getting people casted for like with all the Corona and COVID and all that stuff. And they probably just had to throw this. I, I mean, I hate to say it this way, but I'm pretty sure they just kind of have to throw this thing together just to facilitate the people that they had available. And then too, you got to think, you know, they introduced us or I, how to say this, the, the season was carried by a lot of new faces. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, Manuel and Logan are, was there all the way to the end. Emmy, right? These are yeah. rookies that I've seen for the very first time, and they're foreign. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I mean, I, I think they did a good job, all things considered, with this season. But I think with the track record of them kind of missing the mark in a lot of different ways, for the at least for the fans as a whole, I think is why people are giving this season such a tough critique. Like, you know what I mean? Like, because the season wasn't terrible. No. But some things that I was just kind of like, I kind of saw that coming. You know what I mean? Like, it's just <laughs> like 100%, I would rather watch this season than Total Madness. I thought Total Madness was garbage. Trash, Total Madness. Yeah. Like, did y'all, like, did y'all hand out scripts when they got there? Because I just got it. I couldn't do it. 
Yeah, no, no parts. <laughs> but it, I think it especially kind of it made it more interesting thinking about like them kind of using these older seasons and stuff and into this season and kind of hiding it with the spy theme. And then all of a sudden over the last four or five days, MTV's released like, would you guys like to see another Battle of the X's? Would you like to see another Rivals? Like, I mean, it's just like, uh, duh, we've been telling y'all this. It's like, it's yeah. like five years. What do you mean? What do we want to see? We've right? Been telling- good, to know- <laughs> good to know you guys know how to listen. Fuck. Right. Like, so- God, I-, I think, I think that they've, this is really what I think they've been doing over the last, and it's just me looking at it from like a business side, just like as a, like a business side, right? I think for these last five to six years, they've been trying to branch into like the new generational market, right? So for us that have been watching it for so long, it's kind of like a hard transition to us because they're trying to start like a new wave of personalities, I guess you could yeah. say. And that's been the hard part. But I think that now that they've got so many different personalities going in in from, uh, you know, I guess all over the world. And now they've got all stars to kind of give us back that, that true to home, like feel, I feel like they're going to start getting back to like the classic stuff that really made us love like the show. So like the, the, the exes, the rivals and all that, but understand, like, I think it's going to be with a lot of these new cats, not, we're not going to get, you know, the, 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 I guess the generation that made the talent is what it is. We're not going to get those guys. It's going to be all the new people, but we'll get those same formats that I think is going to bring back a lot of that same excitement. I think it's going to bring back a lot of that same drama. You know what I mean? It's just going to be new faces. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, like, so here's what I'm kind of thinking. And um, I think 38, we could very well see an X's. I think 39, we could very see another rivals. And then I think 40, they try to do a big, you know, dirty 30 type blowout. Huge. Yeah. I think we're going to get arrivals before we get exits. Probably. You're probably right on that, honestly, especially with the way the last two seasons have gone in, the way they built the rivalries between oh, yeah. the characters. Yeah. And I, yeah. think, I think that when we get an exes, it's going to be very, I think the next exes is going to be very messy. Messy. I think it's gonna be messy, and I think it's gonna be, <laughs> and then too though, I think they're gonna mix it up though. I think it's gonna be like because you got people like Corey, you got Casey, you got people like that, right? So it's like I feel like you might. I don't know how they're gonna do this exes because I feel like they're gonna try to make it very like new age. So you might see some girl girl teams, some guy guy teams, some yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? So like I feel like exes might get pushed back a little bit, and they're gonna explore some of these other. um formats to see how they can probably swing a little bit more inclusive version of X's when they bring it back. Um, that might be the smarter move. I like Instead it. do more I like think- a, and maybe what they do is they play it out for another couple seasons. They do like a free agents, let's say next year, then arrivals or arrivals and free agents. Then they do the blowout for 40 and then like 41's like we built all this character development. Now we can do the X's and it yep. really hits. You know then- what I mean? It. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's that would be my only thing with X's is why I think they're gonna probably hold off on that. Um, 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 for probably, yeah, I say 41. I think bring it, I think it do a really big 40, like you said. And, yeah. and because I think even if for this 41, I think they could even do like you know, a bridge of the seasons, right? Because we're gonna by the time 40 comes, we're gonna have some pretty solidified characters on like all stars, you know what I mean? Like, Ooh. Yeah, like and Maya, we already got uh, uh, Mark, we already got uh, uh, T. Latarian. Latarian, uh, uh we got John A. killing it there. Yeah, right? So they can even, like, 40 can even be, like, that season where, you know what I mean, they kind of bridge those two together into one, you know, like old school, new school, or something, something like that. So uh, Josh is over there uh, smiling, and he knows what's coming. And because well, I say this, just well, like on, Corey. Just because... Okay, go ahead. Just because of what he played on, I was talking about, you know, uh, badasses versus good guys, but make it OGs oh, cool. versus new blood. I do. I think that's, that, I mean, that would be huge for 40. Because, I mean, you yeah. could bring so many, like, you know what I mean, like generational gaps. I mean, everybody would really want to see that because it's like, okay, now we can really pit against, like, all right, these are the best of the best from the old school that we really wanted to see compete all these years. Now we get to see them against these new guys and really figure out, all right, who still got it? Who really are the goats? You know what I mean? Like, 
Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like getting that LeBron James and and at it LeBron James and Michael Jordan, you know, in a finals type deal. Like it's just that could be a big for 40. So just like Josh can't go an episode without talking about Corey Lay, I can't go an episode without bringing up season 40 and them doing a the best of the best where you can't even run, be on the show unless you've been in a final before. Like you've had to make a final to even be on the show. That would be a stat pack. Like, dude, yeah, that would be yeah. so insane. Like, and you've already got people that said they they want to come back to the the main flagship show. Banana says, you know, people are getting too close to his seven, so he wants to come back. Jordan already, you know, said he he's open to coming back to the main one. Um, you know, pay the money to get Landon back. I like it because people are gonna come back hungry. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yes. Back with that, like, you know what I'm saying? That super competitive itch. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that super, like, I'm here to prove something. It's especially for especially for those who like, you know, they would qualify because they made it to a final, but they didn't win. So like though that's I want to see those people, especially those one or two timers that, you know, they only came a couple of times, made it to a final or two, but weren't able to win. Like I want to yeah. see them come back and have another so, shot. So <clears throat> MTV casting, I mean, we're talking to one of those guys right now. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Call Marlon. <laughs> Clear his throat <laughs> with anticipation, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, it's so funny to me because it's like they, they keep fucking calling me and they don't cast me. So I'm just like, like, it's like don't call me unless you're gonna put me on the show. Just don't what call. What you get? What you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to fuck around and just like start giving them some stupid ass answers like you did the first time. <laughs> like, really like, what are you doing? Ah, oh, living in a trash can. You know, like, right. <laughs> you know, like well, what's your plans tomorrow? Oh, I don't know. Meet up with some of my buddies, do some drugs. Like, I, you know, it's just like, I don't even know what to tell them anymore. Like, it's just like, oh, uh, you know, it's, uh, I don't even, I'm not even going to get on my rant on that, but it's just like, yeah, we'll, we'll save that for after the recording. Yeah. Off. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. So, Where getting back at? to the, we're, uh, we're back at the male elimination for episode well, 18, and uh, Devin wins. Yeah. We all know that Devin ends up winning barely, which again, shouts to Emmanuel, because even though he lost that elimination, I expected him to lose by a whole fucking lot more. Yeah. And it was really close. So Devin wins and Tori, of course, she starts cheering with everybody, which I was just, I, and I love Tori. I'm, I'm literally like one of her biggest fans, but come on, girl, like just, it's just, yeah. you know, she's way too extra at the and Maybe, you know, and maybe it, it was, was a bad she was, and she was worked up, you know, from her elimination. I get it. The energy, everything. I'm sure she, she her, she was pumped up too because she just beat Amanda. So I get it, you know, but at the same time, like you, she just wasn't thinking logically and it, it just, it looked bad for her. Like even CT called her out. And it's like, at that point, you knew, you're not only getting the attention from somebody like Nelson, but you're now getting attention from one of the most powerful players in the game. And that's no. not good. No. <laughs> and because it's negative attention. So and then TJ tells everybody, you know, this is this is your ticket to the final. Uh, and everybody celebrates. Emmy starts crying, of course. She's the only rookie that has made it to the to the final this year. So that was really impressive and good for her. And then we head back to the house. And one thing that I thought was kind of interesting was we get this little conversation between CT, Nelson, and Devin. And by by conversation, I mean that Nelson and Devin were were talking and CT was just sitting and observing like he always does, <laughs> um, right. you know, but but they were talking about Tori and Devin pretty much says he's like, look, I'm not going to stir up a bunch of shit because we're here. We're at the final. There's we got to go because obviously we don't know how this final is going to work. And if we end up being on teams, I don't need that kind of like bad energy if I end up having to work with Tori. So he's like, I'm pretty much just going to let it go. But this shit was fucking shady, mm -hmm. you know, and ironically, uh, the night the episode aired, Tori had put something out on her story and this really long heartfelt like apology to Devin. And he ended up sharing it onto his story and pretty much saying, dude, like you're forgiven. All, it's fine. It's no big deal. You know? So that was nice to see. Obviously their friendship is still going pretty strong, but yeah, he was, he was not happy. And really none of the guys were happy walking into that final with, with Tori at that moment. Yeah, no, it was, it was, I think, I think it was just like, she was pulling the, the, the distress call for the bets. Cause like 
at that point, like the vets saw it as like, all right, this is very pivotal that we all be on the same page so that we all make it to the final, that there's no like discrepancies that we all can ride together. Cause at that point they thought that it was still potentially a team game. So it's just like, she had made so many moves up to that point, kind of back to back in their eyes that it was like, we don't really know where, where you stand. Is it like, are you rocking with us as vets? Or are you really just only looking out for yourself? Because I mean, if I was in the house and I was like in some of those guys' position, I'd be questioning her loyalty too. Cause it's like, I can't tell if you really just trying to like sway the narrative to, to save your butt because you're really only looking out for yourself and you trust, you know what I mean? Or do you really trust that we got your back and that the best of the best is going to come out for you? Cause we got the numbers and the control in the house, you know? So right. up until that point, like, if I was Nelson, if I was Devin, I'd be walking on eggshells with her too because it's just like, you know, going into this final, who's to say that she won't screw one of us over just to save her butt? Be, just be, you know what I mean? And it's just, and it yeah. sucks because the final is like, you can't really, you can't really take too many risks in a final because you don't know how, how that's going to come back to bite you in the butt. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know if it really is just all out, haul ass, compete, da da da, or if it's going to be one of those things where, oh, when you get to, choose who gets to go first, you know, on this pick, pick a puzzle thing. And now people are thinking about like, Oh crap. Like I don't want to be the first person to pick the wrong card and you screwed me over. So now I'm going to put you in. You know what I'm saying? Tori's target number one right now. Yep. Yeah, exactly. He, he didn't play her cards very well. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it's no secret uh, amongst us or the people that listen to us that I'm a huge Tori fan. I love Tori. I think, like I said, oh. she's one of my favorite female players in the game, but she, Amanda, like she made the biggest mistake and people can say Amanda did, but Amanda made a mistake that lost her the game this season, right? Tori made a mistake that could cost her games in the next three seasons. If oh, people yeah. took it the wrong way, right? Like it looks like Devin has forgiven her, but those other guys up there, I don't think and, they'll ever forget. But the, but it's that's the, the thing too, is that she's going to kind of have the Ashley effect where it's like, it's always going to be that in the back of your mind that like, Yep. She might be next. Yeah. Well, and, and that's what I was going to say is that, you know, Devin, Devin forgave her. But as we saw through through the season and although he doesn't apply these same kind of principles to other people, he definitely applies them to himself, that the game and friendship are different. So I have a feeling that Devin's like, yeah, no, like we're cool and I love you and you're my one of my best friends and all of that fun shit. But when it comes to them working again together next season, like I feel like Devin might be a little bit like a mm, little hesitant on trusting her as much as he did this season. You know what I mean? It's just it's kind of one of those things where it's like you forgive but you don't forget, you know, and, uh, and I feel like Devin's not going to forget because she it's not the first time that she made him feel screwed over, whether she intended it or not, you know, so we'll see. We'll see how that plays out for her going going into the, uh, you know, into future seasons. But anyway, so from there, we we break right into the final and pretty much what the the gist of this first part of the final is, is. Everybody has to race to a puzzle, complete the puzzle. Then they have to uh, race over to a helicopter. Helicopter flies them out over the lake. They have to drop down into the water and then swim to the beach and complete another puzzle and then race to the last, uh, you know, checkpoint. They basically had to swim to those little like moto, like mini jet skis that yeah. push yeah. them along. Yeah. The, yeah. Well, and it's funny because so far the final is looking like it's just a replay of the season, you know, cause like they use those little water jet things that for one of the dailies and even one of the puzzles that they get up to. Uh, well, even the first puzzle was, putting together the map of the world, which was in in the very first day uh, elimination. Can, can I just say this real quick? Like, I'm sorry. Like, I, I know some people struggle with like, you know, the wire puzzles and like the tanagrams, but have y'all never looked at a map before? Like you can't <laughs> yeah. put together a picture of the earth. Okay. But, but this, and like, oh, bless her heart, you know, bless her heart. How was Nani cheating? off of <laughs> each, each puzzle and still getting it wrong. She was like, so last. CT left his puzzle over here for us to look at and I'm going to cheat and look at his yeah. puzzle like two or three times. Like she literally, she literally wow. was like, I don't get it. I don't get it. And she like ran over there, looked and was like, shit. And came back and was like, I don't get it. Like twice. I'm like, what is Yo. going on? Boy, with you, Nani, like, oh my God, 
I, I felt so bad for it because it looked so bad. I was like, you cheating and still not not getting ahead. Like you can't even cheat right. Jesus. Can I even say this though? Like when they started that final and when Nelson took off, like he was running a 40 yard dash. Was like four stump. He hawked CT. Is no yeah. yeah. You know and, and remember when we first talked, I told I was telling you, right? Like Nelson doesn't get the respect that he deserves. He is literally Legitimately, one of the best people to play the challenge. Like he's up there. The only thing he's missing is a final win. If you look yeah. at his record, he's a beast. He really is. And he's a, he hawked, bro. He hawked CT down. What yeah. killed me too was the fact that if you watch the way he runs, he's got his hands perfectly like knife edged hands. You know, he's taking some speed classes to to step it up because that's not a normal run. You know what I mean? Like he's been taking some speed classes to run faster. And it looks fast as hell though. I'm not going to lie. I'm fast as fuck boy. Oh, still fast as fuck boy. Y'all gotta stop, man. Oh. <laughs> but look, I, and I give it up to CT though, because as fast as Nelson is, like if you really, if you just looked at it on paper, like you take away the championships, you take away the stats, you just look at it on paper, size, age, and looking at what they can do in just this first part, you'd say, yo, Nelson's gonna run away with this. But then, you know, you start watching that video and CT, like in the first run, CT caught up with Nelson and passed him. CT finishes that puzzle first, but Nelson chases his ass down eventually. Like it's no joke. So oh, I get cool. credit to both of them. And, you and know didn't what I mean? didn't I, didn't Nelly finish that puzzle pretty? I mean, not super yeah. quick, but he, it was he didn't it was do as CT, bad as I thought he would do. I think it was CT Tory, and then it was I believe Devin was next. It was Devin. Oh, Devin, Devin, and Devin, Devin, Nelson. And then Nelson. Devin and Nelson. And then Nelson. Yeah. yeah, yeah like he so, didn't do bad at all. So, it, like, props to Nelson for that one. Redeeming himself from the puzzle issues he had, like, on invasions and stuff. He's yeah. really shown he's rounded out his skills. He's improving. Like, if is if things go well for him and, and he stays, like, coming back, you know, consistently season after season, he's going to be a very, very, very hard uh, challenger to beat because politically, he's getting better. He didn't. I think this season he realized how much he has to have his own political game without Corey. I think this was the first season where he really truly understood, like, you can be loyal to Corey and still have your own game. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I don't think that's processed in his head until this season. He finally put that together with the fact that you can't have those big blow-ups on anyone. You can't, whether it's Kayla or whoever, you can't have those blow-ups. And, you know, he learned that yes you work with an alliance but not a hundred percent right so it, it's nice to see that evolution when's the last talking. time nelson won a daily yo that's got to be the <laughs> most unluckiest crazy. streak in the world right i feel now. bad for the guy because i agree with you i do too i agree with you all he he is a top competitor he's right there i mean the only thing that's escaped you can't say the only thing that's escaping him is a you know as a challenge win is a daily win as well it's been what 51 i think yeah, it was but- yeah, but let's let's talk about what seasons he's been on. You know, a lot of the yeah, seasons I, I, that Nelson's been on have been like team or partner format. So a lot of the time, right. like it's he's not just been on him. And, like this hand. season, he was fucked on the team aspect. Like he got oh. screwed over this team this year. He, so it's yes, like definitely he was never not screwed on the team format. He was never yeah. not screwed. He was yeah. always like once it was like the, for the team format, he was always he, dude. Look at his so partners that's what too. He look had at, though. Oh, yeah, no, and, and I get it. And I see yeah. the jokes, you know, like Nelson has lost almost as many, you know, because CT just got his 55th daily win and Nelson has lost 51 in a row. And so, <laughs> but at the same time, yeah, it's like, you know, it's like to he me, gets screwed a lot when it comes me, to teams and partners. To me, it's really just bad luck, right? It's a dry yeah. spell. It's like it's like being a professional baseball player. Like you're going to get, you're going to go a while. Sometimes you're going to go on a dry spell and you're not going to get a W. But yeah. with that being said, I mean, and I agree with you, Josh, like that he gets a win and starts winning some dailies too. It rounds it out a little bit better. But at the same time, like at the end of the day, nobody wants to take Nelly down to an elimination. Fuck no. no nobody. Like, like, I don't even think Kyle wants to see Nelly in a pole wrestle. And and pole wrestle is Kyle's thing. Yeah. Right. But he just doesn't want to risk it. 
Yeah, it's, no. it's too. It's because I couldn't even call it. Like Nelly's it's a, a fighter. Like, and then and then think about Nelly is like he's one of the few, if only, challengers that's comfortable going into the elimination round. Like he tries to avoid it because he understands. Like you know what I'm saying? It's still Vegas. You know what I'm saying? You're still rolling the dice. But he's yeah. one of the few people that like if it comes down to him going down there, he's ready. He ain't yeah. Scared. He's composed. He's like, I right, like, let me strap well, up and make this happen. Well, and you, you almost never see Nelly like begging or asking like not to go in. Like even this season, he's like, you know, I don't want to go in, but you know, if you guys send me in, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to do what I got to do. You know, like you don't see him like trying to like manipulate his way out of going in. You want to hear my Stephen A hot take on this one? Uh-oh. Give it. Let's go. Nelly is going to be like the new Leroy, right? Like nobody really gives him the credit he deserves, but dude's a beast, right? Yeah. Like, cause we've had that conversation about Leroy. Leroy wins one final. He's probably on a Mount Rushmore because if you look at the people he's beaten in eliminations, they're all goats. He's beating all bananas. He's beating West. I mean, I think the only one he hasn't beaten is CT. You know what I mean? But like, that's just Which, odds. To be fair, that's because CT knew I think they mutually knew that like they both were like on that level to where it's like, okay, yeah. I don't want my potential of, of, of getting sent home by going against you. So it's like, I think that was more of a mutual respect thing of, of why they see it. Yeah. And like, if you look at it, like the one person who's ended Brad's run of like not losing eliminations was Leroy. Yep. Holy and, shit. It was him. Yeah, in Vendettas, and Leroy was pissed, and he smoked Brad's ass. Like, it wasn't even close. Yeah. Not even zero. That's a damn, I hate that, because it does, like, it seems like, it does seem like Nelson Nelson is about to go in that in that route, like. But I think. That sucks. He's so good. I think Nelson's in a better position, because Leroy came in, what like maybe a season or two before you started right yeah i think so give or take yeah but he came in right during the reign of wes bananas ct you know jordan showing up right like where nelson's at the tail end of that and here in the next couple years like they're not going to be doing anymore nelly's still going to be doing it and then like at that point kyle ain't being really not a lot of guys like that i mean you they really i I mean i mean I i don't know if this is like the way it's like, but they've really characterized a lot of these people to where it's like there's not very many Jordans, there's not very many Brads, not very Derek K's where you get these guys that are super well rounded that can compete in on so many levels, right? Those guys are kind of phasing out. You got Devin, who is the p- politics guy, you got a Fessy, who's the physical guy, you got Josh, he's the emotional guy, right? So, like, I feel like he does have a shot at winning, but it's gonna be all at the it's going to be all based on if he can involve his game. And I just don't, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be able to evolve politically enough to overcome the fact that he hasn't won a final, but everyone in everyone in the challenge knows how much of a threat he is, regardless right. to where the final under his belt or not. And he, exactly. unlike him, unlike CT, they will take a shot at him to make sure that he won't go to the final just because they know how much of a threat he is. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if, if if he doesn't play the politics right. Like, luckily, he's been on some crappy teams, so he's been able to... It, honestly, to tell you the truth, this season, him being on crappy teams helped him get to the final because oh, yeah. they didn't see him as a threat. But he's slowly getting to a point where he's not going to be able to ride that coat to him. And it's going to be one of those situations where it's like, do we, especially with how he's performing in the final now, it's like, I, that, we, yes, that's what I was just about to say, because I'm like, from obviously we've only seen this, this first little bit of the final, but like, I feel like this, is, this final is going to kind of be a, a battle between, you know, who's faster CT or Nelson. And I think once this final's over next season, people are going to start, you know, and, and obviously we'll have to see if Nelson wins. I don't know how this is all going to come out, obviously, especially with what the little twist that that happens in the in the uh, final here and which we'll get to in just a second. So I'm not sure how that's all going to play out. But, you know, I think people are going to start looking at him differently because yeah. of just how well he's performing in a final. And, and it's not even the first time, you know, I mean, we talked about this last time we had you on was, you know, invasions. He lost to CT by two minutes and 22 seconds. Like that's I mean, what? Like really? Like really? Like I mean, like that's that's in very impressive. 
And that is he, insane. And he, of, of a performance. And I just think that, unfortunately, he, man, he's just got his political game right because it's just like, no one really wants to go into an elimination round against Nelson, right? But they don't fear him enough politically to move enough cars that they won't set somebody else up to go go after him. Or, you know what I mean? Like, he's always going to be that guy that, like, well, we can throw Nelson in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I or yep. manipulate the house to where we know we'll get the person that we want in and then they'll call Nelson out. Or, like you said, like, he's getting to that realm of consistent performances where it's like – do we let this guy get to a final? You know what I mean? Like, do we do we really want to risk letting this guy make the final that much harder? Whether he's going to win or not, he's going to make you have to work that much harder to win it. Well, and and if correct me if I'm wrong, but next to CT, Nelson's the only person who didn't get called down or sent down to an elimination this season, right? I don't think he saw an elimination either. No, he didn't. So it was no. CT and Nelson that... People did not fuck with this season in eliminations. And I think that says a lot. Well, it's like the joke I make. I mean, and I've made it a couple of times. Like nobody wants to calm down. Fuck. TJ doesn't want to call Nelson or CT down to that elimination ring. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like even like, he knows, he's like, oh, you should know. yeah. it's, like, it's like y'all are dumb. <laughs> down there and say, yeah, I want to go against Nelson. I think TJ would take would actually give them the same, but wait, are you sure? You, like, are you seriously? sure? You need a second, really? you a second <laughs> chance. You want, you want ne- look again. Look, turn around. You want Nelson. <laughs> another shot, bro. Okay. Like, I mean, I feel like he's one of those guys that TJ would literally be like, let me help you out, bro. <laughs> <don't> right? <laughs> so, so, look, I'm going to run through this real quick because I know we're going to just give more and more takes on this. So, basically, they jump out of the plane. They swim probably 100 meters. Chopper. Get those little... The, the helicopter, yeah, they swim 100 meters, get on those little mini jet skis. They get off it, swim about another 100 meters, get off or get onto land. And then they got to change and they got to start hauling ass uphill. And yeah. it didn't look like a joke. Like those look like some steep hills. Yeah. And I'm going to say CT and Tori had probably about a am going to say 10 to 15 minute lead the way they were paced out in the water on Nelson and Devin. And I would say within about halfway up them getting up that hill, Nelson already had caught CT and started to pass him. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, that hill was no fucking joke. Yeah. And it's just Nelson has no quit. He just doesn't stop. No. And and it's one thing to be running on like, even if even if they were running uphill, it's one thing to be running on a flat surface running uphill. Yeah. No. Not only are they running uphill, but you got rocks, you got different terrains. It's like probably like a hundred and something degrees out there. Like yeah. to be able to move the way he was moving. Oh, yeah. Bro. You know, Casey was having flashbacks. Hey, bro, I was just going to say, I <laughs> saw a meme that like, said. Not this shit again. I saw a meme that said the, Casey's knee when she saw them having to run uphill on loose rocks. Like, you motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like we're swimming, but they're like, not this again. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But. So Nelson gets up to the next checkpoint first, which is like Karina another said, puzzle. another puzzle. And once again, it's another puzzle we've already seen, which is, you know, connect all the wires that are on different pieces, make them basically complete the circuit over to yeah. the other end. And uh, Nelson gets there, then CT gets there. And then I think it's Tori and then Devin, Devin yeah. and then, you know, everybody else starts filtering in. I think Casey's the last one in, honestly, on this yeah. one. Casey, yeah. all right. And Casey was like, look, I'm going to take this slow and stay. Yeah. <laughs> she, she reminded me of Cam on uh, the double agents final when, oh, yeah. when Corey was getting up that hill and she's like, nope, I'm not going to push myself. I'm going to pace myself out. And I was like, oh, shit. That's but, amazing. But um, <laughs> yes, yes, so Devin Casey. gets up there and he just smokes through that puzzle. Yeah. Too. He yeah. Yeah. Murders it. So and we've heard from different uh, stories that what he was like 45 minutes so, ahead. no mm-hmm. so i guess what happened is so devin finishes first right and then ct is shortly behind him but what we actually found out is that apparently between devin and ct finishing there was actually a 45 minute period before tori finished because she was the next one um there was a 45 minute period where devin and ct were just chilling up there on the platforms but- just waiting for everybody and then after tori finished 
there was almost another hour that passed before like um Emmy. before Emmy and all of them started finishing and apparently production had to bring out different pieces puzzle pieces like easier ones so that they could complete the fucking puzzle because ct and devin had been sitting up there for two damn hours waiting for everybody what killed me though was that i heard that when devin finished as he was running up there he kept screaming it's a purge it's a purge you got to get up here quick and he so he was fucking with those people the whole damn time too and i was like that's that's pure Devin really? right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, if he was up there. I'm losing money now. Like, they was well, really he, he was up there screaming. He's like, guys, I already won. It, the game's over. I already won. I got first place. I got the million. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, my God, Devin. Again, the intellectual instigator. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like it. You know, you got to play those mind games every once in a while. So, um, so like we said, Devin gets up there first. Uh, CT's right shortly behind, behind them, yeah. and what they have to do is there's two platforms. There's a purple one and an orange one, and they have to choose, uh, you know, basically a team of four, two men, two women. So Devin's up there. CT and Devin already know that they're going to work together because yeah. they don't want to work with Kyle. And if Nelson was up there, I think it would have been a tougher choice. But and then Tori's the next one, and she hops right on that platform. So it looks like the hatchet has been buried between Tori and Devin. Yeah. And then right next is Emmy, and it's like CT's, you know, dream team. It's like he went through and got all his first round draft picks. Yep. Well, you know, to come to round out his team. And then obviously the final four being Nelson, uh, Kyle, Casey, and Nani all formed the final cell. And on then the or- on the orange, yeah. The orange team. And then what TJ comes in and basically says, you know, you you don't want to finish last. Your cell doesn't want to finish last. It makes it kind of implies that they're if they finish last they're gonna have to go in an elimination against each other which means we we might see that kyle nelson matchup that well, we've been talking we, about we see yeah. that in the in the preview oh TJ I didn't was, yeah. so in the preview for next season yeah he says <laughs> you guys are gonna have to go against each other he it, it it doesn't obviously it doesn't make it clear exactly what that means or who it's applying to because it shows every it shows both teams sure. so yeah. yeah so we don't know who it applies to but I don't know, like the the little evil part inside of me is almost kind of hoping that it applies to the orange team because I kind of want to see Casey and Nani go. Is that fucked up? (laughs) Would you imagine if it was a hall brawl? Oh my God. I just, or a pole wrestle. I just want to see how hard Casey goes if she's going against Nani, or if she gives her a, a little bit of a break, you know? Yeah. <laughs> not no. For me, not for no. a million dollars. No. <laughs> no. Look, it's, think- it's like it's like I tell Rick, like I'll, I'll I'll buy you something pretty when we get home, but exactly. This ain't, this ain't about that right now. This is about me. <laughs> So, I mean, the the theoretically being able to get a Nani Casey elimination or a Kyle Nelson's going to be fire. A Tory Emmy elimination would be fire. A C- hey, but you think, you, do you think Emmy would be able to really give Tory? Oh, and the only reason I said it is because Tory got, Tory's got some experience. Yeah, I think if it's a puzzle, maybe. Not, not like if it's a pole wrestle or it's a hall brawl. I think Tori's experience and as much time as she puts in working in the gym, I think she takes Emmy. Yeah, that, but I mean, her game is, like you said, her trap game is stupid. Bro, she looks like, I wish I had traps like that. Like, right, I was going to hit you up, like, yo, what are some workouts I could do here at home? Like, I mean, I, that's I, a, yeah, bro, I don't know how workouts are going to help you, bro. Like, that's just, her level is, like, next level, bro. That's like Brock Lesnar. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. Gonna to, yeah, I'm going to have to have <laughs> Karina talks to her on IG. I'm going to be like, Karina, like, have her get her workout routine over to me so I can start working on it. Right, yeah, yeah Tori. Exactly. Yeah, we need, we need those uh, workouts, girl. So that's where the episode ends. <laughs> and all of us being, you know, ni- uh, you know, pretty much 80s and 90s kids, I know we're all game with the to be continued because that's all we ever grew up on with TV. Right. So I'm ready. I'm locked in. Right, yeah. right. I, I'm I'm used to waiting a week for my shows like to come back on. Like Netflix is <laughs> full. Of you know what I mean? Like get out of here. Yeah, I'm but ready for this. I'm with you, bro. Like I do kind of want to see that uh that uh that Kyle Nelson pole wrestle showdown. That would be a very very entertaining thing to watch. Like right. <laughs> That'd that's be the one that's the one i think it's a 50 50 it's a coin toss but like if yeah. you start going into a different physical elimination like let's say balls in i think nelson nelson got that style in yeah. hall brawl nelson smokes him um i think paul wrestles that one where you get a 50 50 and it's a fair matchup you know what it's I a mean? fair matchup 100 yeah. 
Like, yeah, that would be a good fight. It'd be like it'd be like Devin CT in a puzzle. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. But see, and this is the thing, though. Look at how much I, I look at. It like, I guess just trying to like game plan or something like that. Like, I look at the fact that there's been a lot of physical stuff at the front, at this front end. So, like, I feel like this back end is going to be the puzzle that's going going to be the deciding factor of who wins. So, like, because yeah. I know, like, whenever. Devin, whenever Devin and CT initially got together, I was just like, that could bite you in the butt because it's like, if y'all got to do a whole lot more running, I don't know if Devin is really going to be the best option for CT. Like, if CT's thinking, like, you know what I mean? Like, I want to be in the best position to win. Like, Devin ain't no endurance runner. So you could be solving all, you could be solving all the puzzles, you know, pretty fast. But if y'all got to run six miles, you know what I mean? Like, is Devin really going to, like, be your best pick? Right, right. No, that that makes sense. I think the chemistry, and I'm going to use a really 80s catchphrase here. I think the synergy that oh they have on their God. team, <laughs> if with Tori, with Devin and CT, they're going to be able to motivate Devin to keep up. The wild card to me on that team is Emmy. Yeah, I guess we haven't really seen her. For lack run. of experience in the final. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and she's yeah. overdue for a mental breakdown. Like, I mean, this should well, be a. She's no, overdue. For us, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's been like five episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's good three every three episodes. She has to break down mentally. But yeah. we saw, oh, yeah. saw a glimpse though, because I think they have to carry. Um, we saw a little glimpse. I think they have to carry uh, a log, like they did, like yes. a log, whatever. So I'm yeah. pretty sure like yeah. everybody has to be touching the log. So I think that's going to be a way that like they'll be able to like kind of scapegoat Devin out. You know what I mean? Because it's like if all three of them take 80 percent of 90 percent of the weight and he's just got his hand on it that's a way that they can kind of like out the new like orange it'd team it'd be like war of the worlds too kind of yeah. kind of well, scenario almost in that oh like, yeah, 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 yeah 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 where they have to carry yeah and everybody exactly, exactly. see what i'm what i'm excited to see is i want to know if they're going to have an eating portion in this final because obviously we don't know how emmy would deal with that this is her for, you know what I mean? And I don't think that Devin has ever had to eat in a final because the only other final he's ever been to is Rivals 3. And was there an eating portion in Rivals 3? I, I honestly, I can't remember, guys. So I, I apologize if there was, but I don't think there was. Dang, do I see Devin having a problem eating? I don't know. Like, I look here. I, don't, I feel like eating is a toss up with almost anyone. Like, I, obviously, we know CT would fucking smash it because he does every so eating challenge. The, but the real question, though, is Tori. She's vegan. You know what I mean? Yeah, but she's so, done eating challenges before. Yeah, but she's vegan now. So she's going to it's going to yeah, sweat her a little bit. Uh, yeah, they brought out different come, food for Fessy. Did they? That's what I was told. On the oh, final? Yeah. No. Okay. <clears throat> okay. When Fessy ate that stuff, they they said that it was different. It looked like it looked a, exactly it looked, looked like, like balls. The sheet that's what I, that's what I thought too. But I I don't yeah. I don't know. I well, don't they know. were eating. They weren't eating pig. So they were eating sheep. So that I don't think that would break any rule as far as okay. where he wouldn't be able to eat it. Yeah, because gotcha. it was like sheep uh, blood uh, and sheep's face and like ram's balls or some shit. Yeah. No, so he's he's good with that. So he yeah yeah yeah. But he they, just can't eat. He just can't eat pork. But know? I think like I think Devin would be like a mediocre eater. I don't think he's gonna be like CT or Tony or Hunter. No. But I also don't think he's gonna be like Fessy or Kara or bananas. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. He's, he's he's gonna he's gonna thoroughly entertain us through the through the eating process. You know, what I mean? like he, oh, he's yeah, gonna yeah. a little bit, but I think he'll be able to push it through. But Emmy, I think that's where we're gonna get the meltdown. Yeah, I think Emmy is, is gonna be the meltdown for sure. And um, you know, look, and just to give any everybody a heads up, everything we're saying right now, we're just kind of guessing on. So if we happen to be right, where I'm gonna give you like the little spoiler alert on this. But oh. we, yeah, we're just bullshitting. You, you never know. Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. all speculation. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but I do agree. I think Emmy's the one that's going to have the meltdown. I think. All right. So my sleepers on this are not even sleepers. Like my picks, like if I'm going to really look at it, I think it's going to come down to Tori and Casey on the women's side. And I really, I think as much as I like Devin and I like Kyle, and I think like they could be sleepers in the right situation with CT and Nelson in this final it's Ugh. them and everybody else, in my opinion. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it was, yeah, it's just not even going to be cl- close. It's going to be down to those two, and I think it's the same on the women's side. As, as great as Emmy has done this season as a rookie and 
congratulations for Nani for once again making the finals. And, right. and Nani's not usually a joke when it comes to finals. Like she pushed Laurel. What was that in free agents? Free agents yeah, yeah, she pushed Laurel in that final. I think she lost to her by like seven minutes or something like that. It you was it was close. Out Nani out. She's not one of those people that you can count out, but it's just not something that I just, she's never someone that you can just put your money on and be like, I'm good. Oh, no, uh, I wouldn't put my mortgage on it by any means. <laughs> but it's such though. I would say I almost wish this was one of those things where, like, I wish I could say, like, for Nelson, you know, with how well he started out, that, like, this is his final to lose. But honestly, like, I just feel like CT's probably going to win again. I mean, and I, and I hate to say it like that, but it's just like, because think about it, they put puzzles in pretty much every aspect of this final. And I feel like that's just always going to give CT the advantage, you know, even if Nelson, let's say, like they said, what it was 45 minutes in between like the two solving. So like, even if Nelson just hightails it and gets 20, 30 minutes of, ahead of him, I feel like CT is always going to be able to make up that gap when they hit a puzzle. Like they, yeah, exactly. It, well, and, you know, and also, you know, I mean, it's, Poor Nelson, yet again, going back to the fact that he gets screwed on teams, you know, he ended up on a team with the master of making mistakes. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I don't know. He, well, I don't know. Like, love. Yeah, yeah. And like we've said before, like, if you're going to beat CT, it's going to be an elimination. You got a 50 50 shot in eliminations. And maybe, like, look, there's some eliminations that he lost that he shouldn't have lost. Like that, that one in the duel against Brad with the carabiner. Yeah. Like that one, that, was stupid. that shouldn't have been a loss. The one with Adam in rivals against Bananas and Tyler. Cause a lot of people think Adam threw that. Oh, so this one you would like because it's uh, just like the. Boom like Raiders, Boom Raiders from this season, but instead where they have of the it trenches. being instead of it being like a Mercedes logo, like with the yeah. three lines, it's a X, and they have to run through, and CT finishes, and Adam's still going, and they're going against Tyler and Bananas, and CT goes, well, I got to save some time. I gotta buy. I gotta buy Adam some time. So he runs down, and he, bro, he, it's it's the hardest hit I've ever seen he in the challenge. He hits Bananas and Tyler at the same time, knocks, takes both of them out with like, and when I say out, they both flew in opposite directions of each other. He ended up busting Tyler's eardrum. Tyler ended up winning that season with Bananas, and then he retired. He, you know, obviously he's, you know, bro. But, he hit him, and then you remember, like, watching Sean Taylor? When, yeah. Uh, when he'd hit someone, and he would just kind of stand there for a second before he walked off, he pulled one of those on him. We'll send you the clip. Yeah, we'll no, send I'll send clip you the you clip. Too. Like, we'll send you that clip, and then I'll send you the Tory clip against Casey, so that way you can see I both of them. Like, I really want to see that. Yeah, we'll we, you got you. Yeah. we got yeah, you. We got you I'm going to send one. you that one. We'll send you that but, one, too. Yeah, no, I, I getting back to it, like, you beat CT in – in a uh, elimination you you yeah. don't really especially in these last 10 seasons you don't beat ct in a final it's you don't he's got too much experience he he knows not to gas himself out early and to conserve it whether it's a one day or a two day final and he knows how to work well with the team at this point like he's and, gonna and we, drop. <laughs> there's nothing that he's not prepared for in a final at this point you know what i'm saying like 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 he 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 knows everything that can be thrown at him in some way shape or form in a final so you're just not you're not going to beat that preparedness yeah. like it's like here, it's period, like going to get no yeah. one to be able to just there's no one that's going to be as well prepared all the way around for a final as ct no one. Well, and well, and I think he even doesn't. He, I think he even makes this comment in his confessional when Nelson zooms past him up the hill. It like cuts to his confessional, and he's like, "Yeah, go on, buddy. You go ahead and and run because we got two more fucking days of this shit." You right. Know? He's like, "Go yeah. ahead. You can have first place and, at this because I'm shooting for first place at the end of the at the end yeah, of the it's final." Been, and the best analogy I can give it uh, from like a sports uh, background and looking at it like as a sports fan is it's like. Nelson's like Sean McVay, right? Like he's got he's got all the skills, he's got all the you know the necessary talent, and he can he can move it quick. But he's going against Bill Belichick, and Bill Belichick's yeah. seen everything, everything for forty years. Right. You're not going to surprise him, and he's going to figure out halfway through, like, oh, this is how I beat you. Okay, or, or a better okay. analogy for you for you, Rick, is, is oh. that he's the Atlanta Falcons up twenty eight to three. And CT's the Patriots. Bro, bro, fuck you. Why you got to bring that shit up? <laughs> <laughs> you never do anything that, man. Bro, See where you started? See what you started? Yo, how, remind me, how did Kansas City do last year? Ooh. Hey, we won Ooh. the year before. 
Yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. I, I got, I ain't got shit to say. Patrick Mahomes is the baddest motherfucker I've ever seen in my life. I'm gonna be real. He, he, a, he went to Texas Tech, didn't he? Yeah, that's Red Raider country, baby. You, bro, give me, a, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't like a couple years ago Texas Tech have like the most stacked quarterback room ever? Like they had Mahomes, like Baker Mayfield, and I heard like somebody else. I can't think of who it was right off top. Like well, Baker, all, but, but Baker, Baker and the Bulls though, because he wasn't. Uh, Baker was behind. Uh, he, but Baker wasn't behind Mahomes when he switched. Baker was behind. Yeah. Hey, who's the dude's name? Look, look, look at this. Baker was so good, we forgot about the guy that he was playing behind. So uh, wasn't I mean, it Manziel? No, Manziel was in Oklahoma. No. Oh man, I don't. I don't remember. I, I can't remember. Off the top yeah, of no, it, and yeah. it's Manziel so who really. But he cares. was good though. He was. He was. Yeah. I mean, he was good, but. Baker, I guess, you know, thought he was better and prove it. So, uh, yeah. you know, neither yeah. there. I'm with you, though. Like, CT is the – you can't throw nothing new at him. So, it's like he's always going to have that experience advantage. You know, for me, it's like it's like, it's like Tom Brady. You can bring exactly. in the new Same baddest thing. defense in the world you know, on any team. Like, my man Brady just knows the game of football, and you're not going to surprise him. And even if you do, it's like, all right, third quarter comes around, and he's adjusted, and it's like – well, y'all had a good run. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. It's yeah. it's it's going to be interesting. I mean, like I said, I I've got the same feeling. Like this is CT's final to lose at this point. You know. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. Well, we've talked the episode. We got our predictions, and I got a I got a couple questions for for Marlon here. I heard I heard a couple of rumors. I got to clear oh, up. God. <laughs> okay, so if they're depending on, we may. Uh, completely edit them out if if we can't air them. But go ahead, Josh. Oh yeah, because yeah, we have we so, have no idea what Josh is doing right now. So yeah, he's, so, he's freestyling on us. Oh, Josh is freestyling. Oh, <laughs> go easy on me. Go easy on. Me. Oh no, first first is a good thing. I have a, I have a friend of mine who's an admin in uh, another Facebook group for a challenge. Her name's Lindsay. You actually uh, picked up the phone and called her husband and her kid. Oh yeah. And she told me to say thank you. She greatly appreciated it. Oh yeah, no. Tell her you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I try to, yeah, I try to give back anytime I can. You know what I mean? For the right. fans. Right. Dude, that's really that's awesome. awesome. That's awesome. Uh, the other thing I heard is that you're a cheater when it comes to flip cup. <laughs> 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 I got I friends, people. I got friends. Hey, hey, I'm not going to say I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a cheater. I'm a, I'm a, a strategist. Okay. It's not cheating, it's strategy, all right? It's all fair in the game of Flip Cup, okay? So, Don't, so tell gonna, me what happened. Two holes in the rules. All yeah. right, we have to know what happened on, now. Just, now I'm curious. Just real quick, though, I'm going to just put this out there. If you're not cheating, you're not really trying. Thank you. Oh that was the first That was the first <laughs> thing I learned in Pee Wee football. You ain't yep. cheating, you ain't trying, period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Wait, I'm assuming this is this is related to me doing the uh, LRG uh, um, in Florida. In Florida, yep. Ah, uh, see, it had a wait, with, wait, Han wait. with Hannah. Oh, yo, she was part of the reason why I got booted out day one. She did. So, she did tell me she's the one who got you booted out. Golly, it was like her and like three other people. Like last minute, was just like, well, we just got to vote him out. And I was like, come on, man. I was doing so well flying under the radar, but, um, but no, 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 that was that. Hey, I had so much fun. I was, I did not expect it to be one. I didn't expect it to be that intense, but like, I mean, you're doing these, like these little challenges, like back to back to back to back. We did like four challenges in like one day or something like that. Like back to back. Wow. And then like oh, damn. breaks. It wasn't really breaks. It was like, we got there day one, got completely plastered. Woke up the next day. I think we had to like do our very first challenge at like 10. And it wow. was like mini, it was like a mini final type deal where you gotta like you did three parts. So you had to do like a run and find some stuff, whatever, whatever. Anyway, that took like an hour. Then like we had a 15 minute break, and then you do another challenge, and then a 15 minute break, then another challenge. Like it was back to back. And then you have to like vote people out every time. And it was just like Dude, it was like wow. crash challenge experience. Like I was just like, oh my yeah. god. But it was weird though, because it's like, I guess, I guess it wasn't it wasn't necessarily weird, but it was like a little bit more pressure because uh, Ronnie from um, Big Brother, uh, season eleven, yeah, uh, yeah. Was there and I was there. So when we got there, everybody was like, oh my god, you know, like oh my god, do you know who's here? Like they're from the challenge. He's from Big Deal, you know. Big brother, we got to get them out first or nobody's going to win. So 
the whole time I'm trying to like fly under the radar, like be <laughs> I need a like, oh no, I'm not that good, guys. I'm just kind of, you know, hanging out, having a good time. He's like Marlon who? What what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that no, guy. no, that's a different Marlon. That's a that's different, a different guy. Marlin. I, I get that all the time. We're twins, <laughs> a doppelganger. You know? Um but I had, I had, I mean, I had a blast. I still talk to a lot of the people that I, uh, I met there. Like that, that small world, like Hannah, like I talked to her like first night and I could tell, I was like, she's a sleeper. Cause like no one saw her coming. And then it was just like, <laughs> as soon as people realized how much control she had, it was too late. And I was just sitting back like, I knew it. I called it. I, I called it day one. And I was like, she going to be the one. She going to be the one. Which yeah. Hannah? Hannah O. Oh, no shit. Yeah. So you oh, know her too? Yeah, so yeah. she's part of the Facebook groups yeah. we're in, bro. Like, yeah. So I know, um, dude, I'll send you an invite to some of them. Like, one of them you might not want to be in, but the other ones are, no. are pretty chill. <laughs> yeah. Um, Haters over yeah. there? There's, no, one, no, no. It's, there's yeah. one called Trash Talk. Oh, it's, wait, no. You know, let, Mar- let Marlene go into Trash Talk, see if he can handle it. Oh, bro, he can handle it. But I know you can. I know you can. I don't take none of this stuff personal, but I think people get upset when I start throwing out all the facts. I start throwing my shit out there, and then they, then they yeah. get like, oh, 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 it's like, hey, bro, you started it. I, I yeah. say, it come on Honestly, in, please. Like, I'd love it. We don't, I don't, I, I, I'm trying to think of like any time we've ever seen anything negative about Marlon in no, trash talk. And we, it's it doesn't. Dire. It doesn't happen. There's very rare occasions it's that like, I ever see anything like negative about you in any of the groups on Facebook. To it's be like 98 percent of the time. It's like, oh, yeah, he needs to come back. And then you got like two percent of the newer fans are like, who's Marlon? Who the and, fuck is this guy? Yeah, because they <laughs> haven't it. gone back to see Rivals 2 yet. And that's it. And it's like, oh, well, go back and watch it. You'll see. So I don't know, man. Yeah, it's it's a big community. And, uh, you know, there's some really cool folks in there and like they get to go to these events. And so we hear about it and all that, but Hannah is an admin in uh, one of the groups that we're associated with. And she's in our group. She's a, she's a sweetheart. We love her. Yeah. She's good people. She's a, she's, she's a fucking good time. Like she's like, dude, like yeah. she's really, cause I ended up staying like after the, um, like the actual like competition or whatever was over. I ended up staying like uh, two or three days afterwards so uh, her and like two other people ended up having like a little birthday party. So, and that's where the flip cup thing went down. We went over there and um, just celebrated with them for the night. So that was pretty fun. So, but I, I didn't, yeah. bro, this is my first time. Like I didn't, I didn't know that this, like all these years, I did not know that like LRGs, ORG, all the, this whole community of, of like people, like I did not realize this existed until this year when I did, when I did this past one. That was my very first like experience ever in the community was me actually doing one. I, I had no clue what I was getting myself into like at all. Wow. And it's fun. Crazy. It was fun. It was fun. All right. It so sounds fun. One yes. thing I did want you to, you know, like, cause like I said, every time you come on here, man, we want you to promote everything that you're working on. We want people yes. to know that what you're focused on. And one of the things we saw is you got an upcoming live coming with um, Polly from the challenge and big brother. And I, I'm a state. I, I can't remember the other Talik. gentleman. Talik, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Um, that one's coming up uh, in January 11th. We're, we're focusing on like mental health, just really mental health in general, but uh, for, you know, African-American men, just, you know, people of color in general, it's, it's been a very taboo thing, but then also for like being a black male and LGBTQ, it's still, a very very big issue that doesn't Absolutely. really address right just because there's so many different layers to that so we're just gonna have a conversation just kind of like it's more like a check-in just to see you know you know my background how i dealt with like quarantine how i'm dealing with life now just kind of like a general conversation just on mental health just coming from my type of background um and just having just an open dialogue you know and it's gonna be on instagram live so you know follow me black zeus fit that week i'll be you know, posting and tagging, getting people geared up for it. So January 11th. We'll share it too. Oh yeah, yeah. we're going to share yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And if you guys aren't following Marlon, make sure you do. It's Black Zeus Fit on IG, right? And then it's just Black Zeus on Twitter. I think all my stuff is Black Zeus Fit. Like if you type yeah. Black Zeus yeah. 
we're going to save everybody the hassle. You're not going to have to go to Twitter and search. We're going to link everything in the interview. Yeah. So that way they can just go right there and check it out. As well as, you know, I, I know you want to bring up BBG uh, Streetwear as, as well. Yeah, man. Actually, yo, like, I'm so close. Like, dude, like, I'm so, this is one of the hoodies, man, but I'm so bro, close. I, I've been peeping that the whole interview. Hey, bro, trust, I'll get you one. Y'all, I will give you guys some uh, uh, um, some exclusive ones that that oh. I'm a, a certain group of people. So, like, you'll have one that you can be like, look, I'm like, like, y'all can't get this, like, limited custom edition. Bro, I got you. like a up. referee whistle. Like, Doc, I got you. But uh, what I am trying to get is just trying to get a little bit of buzz going. So I'm just trying to get people to go to the website, which is officialbbg.com. Just submit your email. I'm not spamming. I'm not sending out a bunch of stuff. But anybody that puts their email in ahead of time, you're going to get a bunch of benefits that once we launch, if you submit, you're not going to get access to those, right? Um, yep. Trying to uh, launch somewhere around mid-March for the early sign-up people so you can get merch that no one else is going to be able to get and then do like the official full launch so around in April of next year. So it's going to oh, be yeah. strategies like, man, it's, it's going to be dope. Like, like I don't even, oh, I don't know if y'all can see, see the back one. Oh, oh that's, man, that's clean. <laughs> Yo. It's going to be a little different, just the designs and everything. So I just really want people to jump on board because uh, if it does well, it's going to be a way that I can give back to a lot of people just in a fitness community. Cause I, I get, I get so many kids that like, don't know, like they don't need like Some kids don't even have access to gyms. Some of these kids that hit me up, yeah. like, I, I want to get into fitness. I don't have access to gyms and stuff like that. So I really want to branch this into being able to give back to some people. So MTV, the, the podcast community supporting would be great. Yeah, that's what's absolutely one hundred percent. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, we'll make sure we share all of that too. We're yeah. gonna link BBG. Um, we'll down do it on the, the Twitter, yeah. on the IG. We're gonna put that in the groups. And that'd be awesome, dude. Serious. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. and you know what? That's one thing that I have noticed is like with the groups, like when it comes to clothing and apparel, like the people have no hesitation in supporting people, and yeah. it's great okay. to see. So we're we're gonna get you up on that right away, and then. Also, um, I've been pushing it. I know Karina's been pushing on the IG is you've got another podcast uh, that you're doing um, that you're co-hosting called Sky Squids, correct? Sky Squids, man. Yeah, dude. So yeah. like, we're really good. Like, I hope people don't get too crazy because like we, uh, me and my buddy, we, uh, uh, we cover conspiracy theories, right? But mm -hmm. we just cover it from a, a perspective of, of this is what information is out there. So I don't want people to think like I'm crazy. Like, I believe in some, some like conspiracy theories and some I'm yeah. just like, a load of crap but right. we basically started this podcast to just really just have an open conversation about all of it you know what i mean like just just whether it's way left field or if it's like well this might kind of be true it's just like look this is the information this is what we found and uh we just kind of have these long kind of discussions just on on what's out there and then you know we mix in just kind of like our personal like lives and different situations as it relates to the topic and how it may or may affect like society or, or, or how we see things, perception. And um, it's a fun podcast, man. We're, it's, it's merely meant to be fun, but we do try to touch on some serious topics just for like growth. You know what I mean? Like interpersonal stuff. Um, um, so it's, it's a fun time, man. We, we, we do it just for fun. And uh, yeah, sky squids. Go I'm going to jump on that. Yeah, Do no, it, definitely dude. I, I listened to the first episode and it definitely go check it out, guys. Yeah, Seriously. And they literally they cover everything from like, you know, different shows that they're watching, whether it's uh, you know, American Horror Story, different movies, okay. different conspiracy theories, everything from Area 51, Roswell to oh, you know, God. Dark first, Side of the Moon. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's 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 everything. Like we just I don't know. It's kind of like when I talk to you guys, like it's just we have an idea of what of the core things that we want to talk about, but it's just like it branches into so many different different little areas, and we just try to try to be in the moment with it. So, oh, that's, uh, that's the best kind of podcast. Yeah, and I was telling Karina because I was listening to it the other day when I was cooking dinner, and I'm sitting there listening to it, and I was like, "Yo, I can never be on this podcast." And she's like, "How come?" I was like, "Because they would never be able to get me off of it because we would just sit there and bullshit the whole time about everything." Be like a five hour episode. Dude. Dude, like, yeah. you got, look, I'm serious. You want to come on? Like, it's like, it's nothing. Oh. You let me know. Oh, bro. I'll, anytime you guys want, I'll hop on there because I'm all about that shit. You know, we, we talk about UFOs 
Area 51. Oh, I mean, we live out here in Nevada. Like, I, I lived in Vegas. We used to drive back and forth right past where Area 51, that general oh, area my is. God. Bro, okay, I'll talk bet. about all of that with you. Oh, bet. My dude, well, my dude's in, uh, uh, he's in Vail right now, and he's coming back. And then, like, I'll figure out, like, when we're going to do our next one, and, like, done. I will definitely hit you up, let you know. Yeah, just let me know. We'll make it work regardless. And, then, um, and then also, um, dude, I, I'd be missed if I didn't mention this because uh, I've been following you on IG is the videography work you've been working on, like everything from music videos and general photography, like commercials, commercials, the whole yeah. nine. So I wanted you to get the opportunity to talk about that as well. Yeah, man. So like, uh, I mean, everything's under just BBG. So BBG films is my videography, man. And this really took off crazy. And it wasn't even like something I was like really necessarily taking serious. My cousin does music and I knew he needed videos. And I was like, I'm decent at it. I had a camera and I was like, I'll help you out, you know? And really honestly from like that one video, I just kept doing more videos and people were seeing my product and it was just like, well, can you do me a video? And then it was just yeah. it was word of mouth. And it was just like, dang, and then I upgraded. So now I'm doing videography, whether it's corporate, whether it's music videos, whether it's, you got a new product, fashion, like I can get it done. You just go to uh, the BBG films. That's my videography page. And really all I'm going to tell you is this is like the videos speak for themselves. I, I really feel like I'm not going to say I'm good. I, I feel like I do have a certain style. I have a certain, you know, flow with how I edit videos and stuff. And you just got to go look. And if it's what you're looking for, I feel like I can execute you a great product. And I'm not one, one dimensional. I mean, I've done it all, you yeah. know? Here's what I'm going to say. You don't have to say it. I'm going to say it. Marlon is good at what he does. Like, yeah. like, so I don't really talk about my personal life at all. Um, it, my professional career, like, cause we just do this for fun. In my professional okay. career, I'm a marketing manager for like a home services company and I handle everything, you know, oh, everything what? that they do. Commercial, so, commercial, everything, copyright, all of that. Yeah, yeah, you do good work, man. It's solid work. Okay. Like I'm watching the evolution of it. It's good work. Like no joke. And like if I was in Austin, I would talk to you about doing some videography for me. So oh. I wanted you to know that. So like, no, it's solid work. And that's not me just blowing smoke up your ass. That's being real. Um, yeah, so absolutely. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Like, I, I, I mean, I haven't really had someone on that, you know, perspective be able to give feedback. It's just been kind of more the people I work with just through word of mouth. So that that goes a long way because, you know, I really I'm honestly like I've only been doing it for like, well, at this point, like I say four months just consistently. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I could tell I'm getting better video by video by video by video. So it's just like, yep. you know, I haven't really hit that that peak yet so i'm really excited just to, to continue the process but to hear that like i'm getting i'm on par with you know what i mean oh, putting out yeah. quality is it's just it helps to know that i need to just keep keep perfecting the craft you know what i mean because i'm getting there. absolutely and yeah. i think it's like one of those things like you know you can compare it to sports or you know music or acting like some people have just like an innate ability to do things right they have an a, a very good oh. eye for things and you got the eye for it you know what i mean yep. and then on top of that like because i already know like we've had the conversation your background in sports and wanting to be a perfectionist and know how to do things and do it right and do it to yeah. the ability i mean it's a it's a good package to have to put all together and i think dude you're going to be really successful with this if you decide to go you know really into it i really do think you i will appreciate be. I'm taking it pretty serious now, man. Like yeah. I'm just really right now, I'm like trying to be a student of the craft because everything I've been doing Absolutely. so far has just been like me winging it really just like just winging it and just trying to figure stuff out as I go. So I'm just trying to perfect the craft and get to that point to where it's just like, all right, like someone gives me a vision and I can just be like, all right, done. Like we got it. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, as well as not only that, um, I know that, you uh you also do you know physical training or you know personal trainer in in your local area so i'm sure if people are looking to you know get into better shape i mean go look at the man's ig it, it, it speaks <laughs> volumes bro you really ain't you know. really don't even need anything else right I'm to, look, look i'm getting up in age so my whole body says like look i gotta get it before i lose it you know what I mean? right 
dude, I ain't trying to like lose everything and be like, dang it, I had a chance. But no, I uh, I'm really big into fitness, man. Actually, you know what's crazy is is I actually just finished designing my website. Um, I don't know what URL is going to be out there, but it's going to be some type of Black Zoo something online. Yeah. But be just look out on my on my IG. But yeah, I'm going to start putting out eBooks because I get a lot of people hitting me up uh, in the inbox for like workout plans and stuff, and I yes. don't really. Have- have to like just write custom plans for everybody so i know that um this is personal training is not really something that i really want to get too big into because it's very time consuming and that takes away Absolutely. from me doing stuff but i am going to send out ebooks on uh uh online for people to help them just reach certain like goals specific goals so i just finished the website today um and then actually over the next couple of weeks i'm gonna start curating like the first like four or five ebooks just targeting like fat loss, building muscle in certain muscle groups. Um, and then I may uh, do something for like dieting, you know what I mean? Just to get people like that real core information that they're looking for. And, and so they don't have to guess, you know what I mean? There's so much BS. There's out so much. Yeah. So much. You know I, I mean? feel like if you give people that solid foundation, that's really more leading to a success instead of, you know, cause the fad dieting, you know, like I've always been a bigger guy. I've done it. I've done the, the, you know, the low carb thing and all that. That's, it's not sustainable. I mean, you got to no. make a concerted effort to make a life change, not a six month change. And I think you're exactly. going about it the right way with giving people that foundation to make those changes. Exactly. Then you got it for life. You know what I mean? Like, you know, yep. Cause like yep. I trained my buddy and he hit me up. He's like, yeah, bro, I'm eating like crap, but I haven't gained a pound yet. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's because like we're, I'm giving you the foundation to where you don't have to be sitting here counting all the peas on your plate to keep the body that you want. You know what I mean? It's just like, exactly. so I'm going to put that information into some eBooks and break it down. And then, you know, that'd be a spot for people to kind of like, I guess, connect with me on the fitness as well. Golly, I'm doing a lot. And I bro, I do love it, bro. Shit, I love the diversification, man. I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, it, it is so funny though, because it's like you had to remind me, like, like yeah. you know, you're also doing this, right? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> well, bro, that's my bro, that's my job. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, that about does it for our recap this week. We just again we want to say thank you so much, Marlon, for coming and joining us. Um, you know, it was one situation to have you on for an interview, but it has been so fucking much fun to have you on for this trash talk roundtable session. Hell yeah. Um, we really appreciate your time with this. Now that you guys are done listening to this, I want everybody to hop on over to Most Likely Two Podcast. Check them out. She's got Leah on today, and Leah is spilling some Darrell tea. Trust me, you guys want to go listen to this episode. Make sure you guys go check that out. And uh, other than that, make sure you guys download the episode. Make sure you subscribe so you guys can get alerts for all of our new episodes. And if you haven't yet, Make sure you guys go find our interview with Polly. We actually just dropped it two days ago on Sunday, and uh, that one is fire. So make sure you go check it out. And other than that, we hope you guys have an amazing week, an amazing night, an amazing day. Whatever it is for you, we hope you all make it the best. So for myself, Rick, my wife, Karina, the one and only Josh Chambers, and the infamous, the threat, Marlon Williams. Thank you once again for coming on, bro. We really do appreciate it. And for everybody at home, we hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you all once again for tuning in. Bye.